weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Here in Georgia, there are now nearly 2,200 confirmed cases, over 300 in Fulton County alone. 65 people have died. The youngest person to die in our state was a man in DeKalb County. He was only 31 years of age. According to the Department of Public Health, he had an underlying health condition. Good evening on this Friday night. I'm Jeff Hollinger, and I am working from home tonight as we support the state's efforts that more people stay at home and do their work from their own residents. And I'm Jennifer Bellamy in the 11 Alive studios. As we see more cases in Georgia, there is encouraging news for a family in Bartow County. You might remember that's where several people got sick after attending a church service and many are recovering. Caitlin Ross spoke with the family of a man who's now been in the ICU for 17 days, but is making some progress. He's my dad. He can do anything. He's, uh, he's always been super bad. Brandon Bryson has struggled watching his dad fight for his life in the ICU for the past two and a half weeks. Derek Bryson is on a ventilator in isolation. And it's really tough because the first person I'd call right now would be him. Derek was one of the first people diagnosed in Bartow County on March 9th after he was exposed to coronavirus during a church service at Liberty Square March 1st. The church reported on Facebook that more than a dozen people who attended that service contracted the virus and an elderly woman died from it. I know people in their 30s who are in ICU who are strong and healthy. This virus doesn't discriminate. As the numbers of confirmed cases in Georgia rise every day, Dr. Kathleen Toomey said it seems the spread is slowing in Floyd County. According to the Department of Health, after the initial outbreak in that area, Floyd County issued a shelter-in-place order. We have seen now that cases seem to be leveling off, but it takes a minute. Remember, these, uh, this virus takes about two weeks, uh, has an incubation a period of as long as two weeks, so you're not going to see immediate action. Bartow County is issuing their shelter-in-place order today, but Brandon says he thinks people in the county did start taking the virus more seriously when they saw how hard it hit his dad. I can't help but think that the social distancing and the measures put in place by the governor and and even our local leadership here uh, are working. His dad is still on the ventilator, but doctors say he's showing small signs of improvement as they take him out of sedation, like blinking his eyes or squeezing their hands. In a world where everybody seems so divided and that the country's falling apart, it's times like these that really bind us together and make us stronger. At a virtual town hall meeting that you saw right here on the ATL and 11 Alive, Governor Kemp talked about his decisions to keep schools closed 
and till uh, April 27th and all of the information that factored into this. He says right now there are delays in current data that is coming before his eyes and he says he would rather right now be very cautious about these decisions. The data that we're seeing today is two weeks old. Uh, the data that we're going to see two weeks from now is going to be what really happened today, and that's just the nature of this. And I just felt like that gives us enough time where we're not moving too fast. We've got we to have some lead time for our school leaders to be able to ramp up, get the teachers back in a few days before the students, and uh, I just felt like the date we set would allow us to do that. Well, these are very difficult decisions to make because the impact is so great all around the state. And right now, we've heard from a lot of parents today, and these parents are talking about the difficult balance that they have of doing their own work schedules from home and also trying to serve as parent, as teacher, as coach to their kids as well. It is overwhelming for a lot of parents to try to figure out on a daily basis, and now it will stretch in to another month. Uh, Latasha Gibbons has some advice for you tonight as you think about your own situation. Well, one of the challenges with school being closed is parents telling us the difficulty they're having with helping their students with their classwork. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, you are certainly not alone. We talked to an expert who's offering some great advice. It's a lot of work. The testing, the quizzing. Parents all over the metro have become substitute teachers overnight. Maybe your problem is math, like Sean Craft in Atlanta. But when she come at dad, what's the Pythagorean theorem? I'm like, oh, uh, baby, I'm about to go and research this. April Crawford in Loganville is juggling three students with multiple teachers each. It's keeping up with all the requirements for each class from home while my husband and myself work at the same time has been a challenge. Do what works best for you, your home, your home environment and your family. To Tanya Jordan, Chief Parenting Officer at Bark, a social media tracking app for parents, wants to help ease some of the pressure. My advice to parents who are balancing working from home and homeschooling is to just take it easy on yourself and on your children. She says balance and realistic expectations are key. We can only do what we can do. You cannot be expected to adhere to the same uh, restrictions and standards and processes that were in place on campus. You've got to shift it for your home and trust your gut. She has a few do's and don'ts like to not expect your child to sit at a desk for eight hours straight. We can't even do that as adults. She says remember to take breaks and get outside if you can. Jordan says skipping meals or having too much sugar are more don'ts because it can affect their productivity. And if the day didn't go as planned, try it again tomorrow. Give yourself some grace and give them some grace. We'll get through it and we will emerge better and closer than ever. And we reached out to several school districts to see if there's any leniency during the digital learning days. We'll post their responses on our website at 11alive.com. The Georgia National Guard has deployed medical support teams to fight COVID-19 to hard hit Albany. Our Elwin Lopez reports on how retired Army officers are now joining in to help the effort. It just seemed like here I have the skill set and I'm not already serving in a hospital or a clinic uh, currently. So I replied back and said, yes, I'd, I'd be very interested in supporting this effort. Phyllis Wilson served in the Army for 37 years, but never as a nurse. Yet that could change in the near future as she is also an RN willing to answer the call to service again during a time of uncertainty. The Army says it is requesting potential assistance from retired career medical personnel. The Army says it will in no way interfere with any care these former soldiers may be providing to their communities. This is for future planning purposes only, completely voluntary. Wilson says serving again, even in a dangerous environment like a pandemic, is something she wants to do. We are on the front lines, and instead of a war zone, a combat zone where we pick up a rifle, now we pick up our stethoscope. The Army says as of today, it's heard from more than 14,000 retired soldiers who are interested in returning to support COVID-19 response efforts. Now, Wilson is waiting for her call back. That opportunity to continue to serve struck a chord with me, just waiting to hear whether or not, you know, it might be one of the lucky ones that gets to go back and serve. The state has repeatedly said that, or anybody who needs the test, it will be granted free of charge. 
But you wonder about treatment. Does that include treatment as well, particularly for those who do not have insurance? They are in a very difficult situation. Here is Joe Hankey to get answers for you tonight. Uh, anybody that needs a test will be eligible to get one at no cost and certainly the same as for treatment. Um, you know, this is vital that we that we stop the spread. When we asked the governor's office today where an uninsured person with COVID-19 would receive no-cost treatment, his staff first pointed us to the Indigent Care Trust Fund, a pre-existing fund providing the low income with free or reduced cost health care at certain hospitals. A spokesman for the governor added they understand a federal assistance package will include uninsured treatment funds. Jennifer Tolbert with the Kaiser Family Foundation, though, says lawmakers have yet to pass COVID-19 related funding solely for treating the uninsured. Uh, there is money for hospitals, $100 billion that is appropriated to hospitals, but very little detail about um, how, how hospitals will qualify for that money, how it will be distributed, and what it's intended to be used for. Tolbert says Kaiser estimates 20% of cases lead to a patient being hospitalized, with stays lasting longer than flu or pneumonia cases, and bills for the uninsured possibly topping $20,000. She stressed people with symptoms need to seek out testing and, if needed, treatment despite the possible bill. One option she suggests are hospitals with charity programs that can reduce bills after treatment on a case-by-case -case basis or seeking treatment at a public hospital. There are some public hospitals that charge uninsured individuals a sliding scale fee at the outset. And Bernita Haynes with Georgia Watch says there are several other options. Federally qualified health centers and um, the public health department as well as other community health centers should be um, a first choice for folks who are uninsured um, to seek health care free of charge or on a reduced price uh, sliding scale. Federally qualified health centers offer primary care in underserved areas, including across the Atlanta metro. The Georgia Charitable Care Network is a source of clinics typically billing small or no fees. And Haynes added, you can always put in a request to be billed similar to an insured patient who is in network. People you, that I've seen as a pillar of strength, this has, has shown how vulnerable we are. Ministering to the sick and hurting is his calling in his community needs him now more than ever. Next, a pastor describes how his small town is coping with COVID-19. Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and retire. <laughs> It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, Auntie. No. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say in the No, my movement ain't faded. You can assume what you're doing with me to make sure. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Cast There are three big issues coming in tonight, uh, very latest on the coronavirus, to make sure that you are aware of what is going on today as these developments continue to come flowing into us. 
So let's get you updated right now. First, both Disney World and Disneyland will remain closed until further notice. The coronavirus forced both parks to shut down a little over two weeks ago. They were originally scheduled to reopen on Tuesday. Even while closed, park cast members are still receiving a check. The company has vowed to pay employees through April 18th. Due to coronavirus cutbacks, more than 21,000 employees at Delta Airlines have volunteered to take unpaid leave. In addition, all ground employees are reducing their schedule to three and four day work weeks from April through June. The company says this will result in a 25% savings in the payroll over the next 90 days. And over 170 members of the Georgia National Guard are now active to help combat the coronavirus pandemic. This comes after almost two weeks from Governor Kemp when he authorized up to 2,000 service members. According to the governor's office, the troops are mobilized to support GEMA and the Georgia Department of Public Health. In a statement, Governor Kemp says the Georgia National Guard is providing critical support in our efforts to stop the spread of the COVID-19 and mitigate its impact on our state. A doctor in Decatur is sharing his COVID-19 experience, hoping to give some insight and perspective to others. Dr. Zachary Cohen has been in quarantine now for 18 days fighting to get well. He's 34, always been healthy. I exercise, I'm a healthy eater. Um, I have no asthma, I have no lung diseases, and this is the worst um, viral illness I've ever experienced. I've had the flu a couple times before. This is definitely worse than that. There were a couple of scary moments breathing wise. As a doctor, he was certain he had COVID-19. It does seem like there's a shortage and not all healthcare workers that are sick can get tested and I, I can attest to that. The people that are high risk need to definitely take all the precautions, but they're young, healthy, you know, no medical conditions. Um, individuals in their 30s, 40s, and 50s that are being intubated. His message, it will take all of us to fight this. I think the concept of flattening the curve is absolutely the number one priority. Well, that's certainly something everyone staying at home and practicing social distancing is helping to do. Coming up at 9, Dr. Cohen talks about what it took to try and get tested for COVID-19, even as a healthcare worker. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. That pollen count was really high today. If you took a break from working inside or helping with the kids with their schoolwork, you know it was not only hot, but it was also uh, uh, you got your lungs full of pollen. You can see the pollen count today, 5847. The main pollens present are, of course, those tree pollens, and it's oak, pine, maple, sweet gum, and sycamore. Grass pollens are in the moderate range. The weeds are very low, and then the mold has come down. It's been high over the past few days, but at least that has come down a little bit. And you can see the trend through the week as when we had the cooler air and some showers on Tuesday, it was all the way down to 19. So you can see how we've risen through the week. Yesterday, we thought that was bad at 3697, but today, 5847. That is the 13th highest pollen count that we have ever had here in the Atlanta area. And you can see these high temperatures today uh, that were just so close to a record. 85 was the high. The record is 86. We should be at 68 for this time of year. So we're way above the average and close to that record. And then no rain officially, but we're still about 12 0.59 inches above where we should be in rainfall for the year. So here's what we're watching with the wisometer, starting off at 63 degrees early in the morning. Then we get up to 83 in the afternoon. We're going to see some sunshine, but it will be mixing in with a few more clouds during the day tomorrow. But those clouds are not going to give us any rain. We're going to go with a 9 on the wisometer. That's our scale from 1 to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day. Those clouds blocking out the sun may make that wisometer number come down just a little bit. Tonight, we're fine mainly clear skies. It's going to feel pretty mild, pretty comfortable out there. And then here comes that cloud cover we're watching, that southerly flow and southwesterly flow, not only bringing us the warm air, but it's also bringing us moisture in the form of clouds, not in the form of rain. You can see that by lunchtime. We'll see a few of those clouds that we'll have around in the area. And then that'll clear out, we think, in the afternoon and evening ahead of the next system that comes our way. This one early on Sunday will bring us some rain. Now, this is the same system that's causing severe weather in the Midwest right now, but by the time it makes it here, it's gonna be a lot weaker. I want you to know that Sunday is not a washout. We're just talking about this fast moving system. This is at seven in the morning, is gonna sweep through here, through
through the morning hours. At lunchtime, we think it's pretty much going to fall apart over on the east side, but it'll move to the east of us. And then for the rest of the afternoon, we'll see a few clouds around mixing in with that sunshine, but we're not concerned about any additional rain that'll be moving in during the day. So here is that forecast for the next seven days. You can see that increase in cloud cover Saturday, 83 for a high. 40% chance for showers, quick moving system early on Sunday, and then dry for most of the day Monday with the chance for a shower late Monday, better chance for showers Tuesday, and look how we cool down at 68. Dry weather conditions Wednesday and Thursday in the 60s. We're back to 70 degrees by next Friday, still with partly cloudy skies. Well, this coronavirus pandemic is taking its toll on communities all over the state, even in houses of worship. Tonight, we take you to the small community of Albany where a pastor and his congregation are dealing with the worst. It has been very hard for me. Um, I am a hands-on pastor. 30 years of pastoring and Daniel Simmons has never faced a Goliath like this. Some of his church members have the coronavirus and he knows everyone in town who has passed away. One of them, a good friend, a fellow pastor in Albany. And I know them uh, and they're friends of mine. And, uh, and it's been tough. And even in the case of a couple of funerals, I couldn't even go because there's an ordinance limiting the number of people that can attend the graveside service. But I am heartbroken. I am fighting depression over that. Um, I am fighting um, that part of me that wants to defy everything that's been handed down in terms of what we're supposed to do. Ministering to the sick and those who are hurting is Pastor Simmons' spiritual calling in life. But now he's reduced to phone calls painful phone calls. Um, I've had phone conversations with people who are sick and, and they are crying and family members are crying. A lot of grown men are crying and just people you that I've seen as a pillar of strength. This has, has shown how vulnerable we are. And even if the number of cases decrease, Pastor Simmons believes another disease is on the way. Another one that no one can see or touch. And one of the things that um, I think this country needs to be ready for is that there are going to be a lot of people with post-traumatic stress syndrome as, as a result of this virus. And there has to be something in place to, to help these folks. Yesterday marked a long-awaited return for a group of medical students as they were able to finally come home to Georgia. They had been stranded and stuck in Peru as they had closed down the country. Augusta University student Ali Raploge says they were aware of the scope of the pandemic and then they tried to, to work and figure out some sort of way that they could get home. I think that uh, the feel was just, I think we were frantically trying to um, get out in any way possible. We exhausted all of our options. Um, every single airline, um, we looked at flying into any city in the United States, not just Atlanta, just something to get us home. Um, all airlines were booked, all flights were booked. Well, it's great they made it and glad to be back home for sure. It was a combined effort that helped bring Allie and her colleagues back to the United States. Allie says she is forever grateful of getting out of a very tough situation. Our universities, you know, had prepared to send a charter flight for us um, to get us home. We are so blessed for our universities and our families um, and our friends advocating for us and doing anything that we could to get home. Well, we've been following their story for weeks and nobody knows the troubles they've seen. And you can check out their saga and it has been a harrowing one, that's for sure. 11alive.com is your place for all of that information. We continue on the big broadcast on this Friday night. Next, with the United States leading the world in COVID-19 cases, we are asking NBC News medical correspondent Dr. John Torres about efforts to fight the pandemic. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh. did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you 
slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Mm. Oh, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. I've got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. right, right. about I mean, that. Reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. Only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the rush blog, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show Every day brings new information and more changes, so we want to keep working to give you the best information as you make decisions for you and your family. That is how we help spread facts to help alleviate the fear. Part of that is bringing in trusted health professionals. We're so glad to have NBC medical correspondent Dr. John Torres with us today from New York City. Dr. John, there was a time you and I used to sit next to each other back in the day in another city. I know there might be a little bit of delay <laughs> because of technology here, but we're really glad to have you today. I wanted to start with the idea of ventilators. I saw the president tweet out he wants car manufacturers to hurry up and make ventilators. We're, we're hearing that um, some medical professionals are talking about sharing ventilators or doubling up patients on ventilators. Is that possible? Is that sustainable? And Cheryl, you're exactly right. And to answer the two questions, yes, it is possible as far as sustainable. For a short-term period, it might work. And what's happening is coronavirus patients, this is a respiratory illness, so their lungs get affected, they get put on ventilators. Unfortunately, they're on ventilators for weeks on end, so they're occupying that one, and there's not a whole lot of surplus of ventilators to begin with. And so if more patients show up, that's gonna create a shortage. We're not quite there yet, but a lot of hospitals, including here in New York City, are looking at what happens if we get to that point, can we share ventilators? Here in New York, they're trialing, sharing two ventilators. A doctor in Michigan showed how to do four ventilators. The problem is it's very short term. The patients have to be matched exactly as far as lung volume, breathing rate. If one recovers faster than the other one, it won't work. So again, it's a short term solution. It was used in the Las Vegas shootings until they got enough ventilators in place, but it's not something that's gonna be long term. And hopefully if we flatten that curve, we're not gonna get people rushing to these ventilators all at once and having to need them all at the same time. And we'll have more time to, to separate them out and get people on ventilators without having to share them. Yeah, as we hear your explanation, it can give people incentive to keep making those personal decisions to flatten the curve that you're talking about. So we can expect in densely populated cities like New York City, even Metro Atlanta, where we have the highest number of cases, that the cases would be higher, they would spread more quickly. But we also have some clusters here, Dr. John, in Georgia, in smaller rural communities. Those are not immune to a faster spread either. That is a misconception that's out there. Absolutely correct, Cheryl. Small communities are not exempt. It might be a little slower getting there. Like you said, New York, Atlanta, Chicago, New Orleans, these are big cities where you tend to be around a lot of people, and so the, the virus can pass very quickly from person to person, but it's going to get to those rural communities. It's just going to get a lot slower, so they need to practice the exact same things, the social distancing, washing their hands, not touching their face, those things we know works. 
And the main thing to re remember, if you live in one of these small communities, it's not that coronavirus is not gonna get there, it's either already there or it's on its way to get there. All right, Dr. John, thanks for the time and for your expertise, we really appreciate it. You bet. You know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, my auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. Yeah. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to. But I want to thank Republicans and Democrats for coming together, setting aside their differences, and putting America first. President Trump signing the CARES Act, more casually known as the Coronavirus Spending Bill, which will, among other things, send checks to Americans with the idea of jump-starting the economy. Joining me is Chuck Todd, the moderator of Meet the Press. Chuck, Congress able to get something done on a bipartisan basis. How much of a boost will this end up being to the economy? Is it too early to try to project that? It's essentially a series of bridge loans or bridge payments. It depends on who you are for big industries, medium-sized industries, small businesses, or people with the direct payments. But it's all designed to do the same thing. Keep yourself, your business, your industry afloat while we get through this. And see, that's the question I have is, to me, the direct payments are about getting through April, yeah. helping people maintain, you know, essentially get through not working. But what do you, you brought up, on, to me, you brought up an important point, which is this is too early to be economic stimulus, which means at some point we're going to need actual economic stimulus in order to encourage people to go out and spend money. Right now, we're trying to encourage people, no, 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 don't go out and spend money, pay your bills. Please stay in. Don't work right now. Uh, we're going to keep. We're, we're going to do the best we can to protect you. So, I think the question is, what do we do come May and June if we still need to have some people not work? We've seen the president take a lot of hits for the daily briefings, but but I've seen some poll numbers here.
giving him some good marks for his handling of the pandemic so mm -hmm. far. Yeah, I, you know, look, I think you see a, a bit of a rally around the flag effect. Um, there's a couple ways to look at the president's numbers. They are bumping up a little bit. They're not bumping up the way they're bumping up for governors, right? There is a, it is interesting, and you do see, when you start to look at it in comparisons, there's a lot more confidence that, that uh, Americans seem to have in their governors in handling this than it is with the president. The views in the president are still being formed through the eyes of red and blue. Whether it's the president's comments themselves or just his own reputation, I, I still think Americans view him more as a partisan and are judging him still through the prism of their red and blue glasses. I think it's also interesting to see how the phrase shelter in place has been politicized in America. The left and the right going at it over this. We're yeah. seeing that here in Atlanta with the mayor wanting people to stay in place, though she is not shutting down what's called the Beltline here or the parks, and the governor go in the opposite direction. I, I, I think that's true among elected leaders that you're seeing, you know, some blue and, and, and red sort of differences in how to, how to announce certain things, the shelter in place, this or that. But what's been interesting is the public, there's less of a partisan gap among the public. There was a partisan gap about the seriousness of this, say, two weeks ago. One of the things that we've noticed, particularly this week, that gap has closed dramatically. And while there's still some differences when it comes to um, the idea of a full shutdown, partial shutdown, try to reopen, those have closed a lot faster than the gap, say, between your governor and your mayor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, thanks a lot. Have a great weekend. We appreciate your insight, as always. You got it, brother. Stay safe. Stay healthy, brother. You too. Many of you have questions about stimulus payments, particularly for people who have not been filing tax returns. For some insight, we posed some of these questions to Stephen Balsam, who is a professor at the Fox School of Business at Temple University. So here's the first one. Can people who are in between housing or transient participate? The IRS will contact, if they don't have an address for you, they will contact the Social Security Administration and they will kind of merge their records, uh, see who they missed. Uh, and they will mail a check to your last known address. Another question, if a person's low income exempts them from having to file taxes, can they still get a check? According to what I've read, uh, and it was pretty clear, the IRS is not gonna deduct, you know, they're not gonna keep any of it. They're gonna, eat, if, you're, if you're supposed to get 1,200, you're gonna get 1,200 regardless of what you owe. We have a tool that can help you along with this. Actually, here's another question um, right here. Well, actually, let's get to the, the other information we want to share with you tonight. We have a tool that can help you calculate how much you will get from the stimulus bill. You can find that right now on 11alive.com. College football staffs around America are trying to figure out which direction they're going. Kirk Herbstreit today of ESPN said he didn't think that there is going to be an NFL season or a college football season coming in the fall. But coaches can't be, con you know, they can't be concerned with that right now, at least overtly. And Jeff Collins over at Georgia Tech is, is trying to deal with this the best as he can. Maria Martin spoke with him today as he is addressing something called virtual workouts. And, of course, he's enjoying the family time, the unexpected family time that he's gotten here. You kind of feel that something was coming um, as cases kept popping up across the country. Georgia Tech head coach Jeff Collins and his program are in the same position as schools all over the country. Spring football halted because of the coronavirus. A lot of the college football programs aren't fortunate enough to have gotten six practices in like we were. What the accommodations will be for preseason camp or even the summer. But I think that the health and safety of everybody and the well being of everybody is at the forefront of everybody's mind. Coach Collins was pleased with the significant strength gains his team made in six spring practices. We challenged our team uh, that we wanted to gain on an average of 10 pounds per person per man. Now the challenge will be now that we're all apart from each other is to continue those gains. Now, He's getting creative to keep those climbing. We have such a young, energetic, in shape coaching staff that our coaches do the workouts too. I got up at 4.30 this morning to do my piece of it. And as we all try to navigate this new normal. Hey buddy, my little three-year-old is about to pop in, I'm sorry. <laughs> it means getting to appreciate the things we normally miss out on. Probably for the last 10 nights, uh, we've actually sat down and had dinner together. In this day and age of Uber Eats and my ridiculous schedule on the Power 5 football program, that doesn't happen. And uh, for that to be able to happen is 
it's kind of been, uh, you know, it's kind of been nice. Right now, the state is prohibiting crowds of more than 10 people. That's to flatten the curve of the outbreak and slow down the spread so our hospitals aren't overwhelmed. But funeral homes say they are having a difficult time limiting crowds, and they're asking the state now for guidance. 11 Alive's Doug Richards explains. A number of COVID-19 cases in southwest Georgia have been linked to funeral services. And while the outbreak has shut down much of the economy, the demand for funerals has not abated. This funeral procession marked the passage of an Oconee County commissioner named Bubber Wilkes. Dozens of cars were in it, marking the death of a man with a big public profile. And it can be very uh, difficult and challenging for families to have to decide who will attend the services and who will not. Funeral director and state representative Patty Bentley says some people still want large funerals, even in a pandemic. And while the state of emergency limits crowd sizes to 10 or less, she thinks funerals need specific attention in those guidelines. A funeral director's association has written a letter to Governor Kemp requesting rules that temporarily suspend all funeral services at chapels or other locations, while allowing limited graveside services. Right now, Bentley says the rules seem to be different in different counties, which confuses bereaved families. But then you have local governments uh, some are doing things totally different. And so it's created a lot of confusion and uncertainties for funeral directors as we are trying to uh, work with families during their most vulnerable time of their life. Bentley says her South Georgia mortuary is in the planning stages of a funeral for the recently deceased pastor of a very large church. State guidance, she says, can't come soon enough. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And, of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make, call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say I'm gonna do. No, 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 You could have super... Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, I sent my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm -hmm. Stop. I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got him. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Chess? I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, 
live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive TV. The COVID-19 headlines are constantly coming in, so here are a few stories today that you may have missed. Google is offering $800 million in credits and financial aid to small businesses, academics, governments, and the World Health Organization. The tech giant said it would provide $340 million in Google ad credits to small businesses with active accounts over the past year. The credits can be used for advertising goods and services until the end of 2020. The Florida Keys are closed and officials are setting up traffic checkpoints to enforce coronavirus restrictions. Those who actively work, live or own property in the Florida Keys are still being admitted to the islands, but tourists are being restricted. Anyone considered essential, including first responders and healthcare workers, have to show proper identification in order to get through those checkpoints. The mandate is an effort to limit the spread of the virus. Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook and his wife Priscilla Chan are making a $25 million donation towards a COVID-19 vaccine. The Bill Gates Foundation opened the program last month with a $50 million gift. The latest donation now brings the COVID-19 therapeutics accelerator to a total of $125 million. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. We are keeping a close eye on this Friday evening on a storm system that's out in the Midwest right now that is causing some severe weather. And you can see that yellow color there up through parts of Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana. That's the level two risk for storms to move through. It's called the slight risk, but that's well up to the Midwest. But we're watching this because it's gonna get its act together tomorrow and pretty much in the same area, maybe moving a little bit more to the east, that slight risk comes over in the parts of uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, and Kentucky. And look at this, see that color there? That's a moderate risk as you move up into parts of Illinois. So that's gonna be a place tomorrow that we're gonna be watching for the chance for some strong, severe storms there. But for us, this system really isn't gonna have much of an impact on us. As it gets closer to us, you're gonna be watching some storms tomorrow moving through Nashville, Northern Alabama, but that marginal risk, that green color, just barely touches the Northwest corner of the state. And I know you're watching this thinking, okay, is that gonna to hold together and impact us on Sunday? Well, look at this, by the time it gets here on Sunday, it's gonna be a lot weaker. We're just talking about general showers and general thunder showers on Sunday. And it's gonna be a really thin line of showers that moves through here. And so it's gonna move through pretty quickly and we don't expect severe weather at all here on Sunday. So we're thankful that that's gonna be a lot weaker for us. We are gonna be close to a record on Saturday again. We're expecting a high of 83 degrees. The record is 85 degrees, so we'll be just below that record. Some showers move through on Sunday and then some cooler air moves in uh, as we get into next week. A nine on the wasometer, that's our scale from one to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day. Lows near 63, high of 83. We will see those clouds though increasing, mixing in with that sunshine a little bit more. You can see tonight on the forecast track how we're looking fine. In the morning, here's a look at that cloud cover that's approaching and moving closer to us that'll be blocking out that sunshine at times at lunchtime still a few of those clouds i don't think they'll break up in the afternoon before that system comes in on sunday this is a look at it right here see how that is just falling apart as it moves in just a thin line of showers maybe some rumbles of thunder and flashes of lightning in northwest georgia seven in the morning saturday a uh, sunday and then by lunchtime we think that a lot of this is going to be falling apart and pushing off to the east of us. And for the afternoon, we're going to see some dry hours here on Sunday. So things are actually going to be looking uh, pretty good for your Sunday afternoon. And then leading into Monday, a dry start as well. So we have increasing clouds Saturday, 83, 76 Sunday, those showers early. And then 73 Monday with a 20% chance for a shower late. That leads into the next system. That'll give us a better chance for showers, a couple of thunderstorms possible on Tuesday. We cool back down to 68, holding in the 60s Wednesday and Thursday with the dry weather. And then by Friday, a mixture of sunshine and clouds once again with high temperatures back up to around 70 degrees. All right, Chris, that sounds pretty good. Businesses all around Atlanta are hurting. We focused on, you know, so many restaurants over the past couple of weeks and the fact that so many of the hospitality industries are really hurting in Atlanta Metro, but there are other businesses that are greatly impacted too. Some that are deemed as essential are faring all right. 11 Alive reporter Tracy Amikpeer talked to one tree company who says it's doing pretty well right now, at least in the short term. We are working every day. We're sending our tree crews out every day, five days a week, sometimes even six. We are keeping our employees with full paychecks to bring home. 
David Kolb has been an arborist with Save a Tree in Atlanta for 12 years. He says since coronavirus hit, they've actually seen an increase in calls. The more time people are spending at home, the more they are going to be into noticing how important their landscape is. They're deemed an essential business, keeping people and property safe at home. I am inspecting their landscape for safety issues. Um, I look for disease, insect infestations, hazards within their trees. And cutting down hazardous limbs before they become a problem. The nature of their job makes it easy to practice social distancing since they work mostly outside. But Kolb says there are other new safety measures they've now put in place. All of our crews are cleaning their tools, not sharing them, um, instructed to wipe down the high touch areas multiple times a day. And if someone on their crew does get sick? And they will be asked to stay home for the period of two weeks. Mm -hmm. One, and they will not be able to come back until they are cleared by a doctor. And do they have a job to go back to? 100%. A growing crisis in New York hospitals, the plea for ventilators and why one Atlanta doctor says she now is frightened to go home. Streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. I'm no, 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 You kill a super. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. We now know the U.S. epicenter of coronavirus is in New York City, and tonight we're getting a closer look at overwhelmed emergency rooms fighting the virus. The state's governor says there's still a desperate need for ventilators, and now doctors are resorting to splitting them to help two patients at a time. NBC's Gabe Gutierrez has more. This morning, the U.S. has the most reported coronavirus cases in the world. I've never seen a health crisis like this before. In New York, the number is skyrocketing, now more than 37,000, a triple-digit spike in deaths. Our station, WNBC, got rare access inside a hospital in the Bronx. The ER is packed. Patients with COVID-19 symptoms are isolated. Soon, this triage tent may be necessary. The city just sent 40 ventilators and dozens of more workers to Elmhurst Hospital in Queens. 13 deaths in 24 hours. Outside, the line of patients begins before dawn. 
I don't know what's going to happen. From a distance, we spoke with Ignacio Ramirez, who started feeling symptoms on Sunday. He waited five hours in line to get tested. I have fever, a terrible headache, doesn't stop, it's horrible. Overnight on Fox News, President Trump appeared to minimize the scope of the crisis, casting doubt on the number of ventilators that are being requested in New York. But I have a feeling that uh, a lot of the numbers that are being said in some areas are just bigger than they're going to be. I don't believe you need 40,000 or 30,000 ventilators. The city's EMT response now approaching a crisis, with a spike in 911 calls causing up to three-hour delays for ambulances and non-emergencies. In two weeks, we have a 20 percent or 30 percent people out sick. Across the country, major cities are starting to see an increase in coronavirus cases and brave doctors risking their own health. In Atlanta, anesthesiologist Dr. Michelle O is intubating critical COVID patients. You're aware that every moment you're spending in this airway, you are possibly aerosolizing this, uh, this very infectious virus. Her husband is also a physician. They have three children. Every day, she worries about carrying the virus home. This past weekend, she and her husband redid their will to make sure their children are cared for in case they don't make it. It is a real possibility now that we could lose one or both of us. It's affected our home life. It's affected our work life. And there's really nothing that's separate from the virus at this point. So to come, medical supplies on the black market. Our reveal investigators go undercover to see the extreme measures people are taking to get their hands on masks. Inman Park, if you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Uplink? Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. would wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with... This is such an emotional time for so many people. I mean, you get to this point of the year, and those that are seniors in high school, they've been working for years for those final few days, the prom and graduation and all of those emotional moments, quite frankly, that... You know, all these years later, I still remember, and I know so many people do indeed. Henry County superintendent wanted to make sure that her students know that she feels their pain as well, but she believes they are right where they need to be. And we want to read part of the letter that she wrote to parents and students. Here's Cheryl Preha. I'm sorry your senior year has been interrupted by this crazy global pandemic. 
I'm sorry that the months that you have anticipated with great excitement are now riddled with uncertainty and frustration. You and your senior year have been weighing on my mind. I want you to know that we're doing everything we possibly can to ensure that the most memorable moments are captured and celebrated as soon as it's safe to resume our normal operations as a community. It may seem a bit unfair right now, but I really do believe you were meant to be right where you are. You were meant to be the class of 2020. Since you were born, you have been our community's reminder of hope, triumph, and belief. You are the class that has lived a lifetime of overcoming the unimaginable, and you will forever bring us all together, bring us through, and bring us out a better tomorrow. While it is hard to fathom and understand what is unfolding around us, I also believe that you are destined to create some of the greatest acts of goodness, kindness, and impact we will ever know. There are those random moments when you can feel tears during this pandemic, and I, I, uh, that, that has touched me today. I, I've, I've listened to that a couple of times. Again, the superintendent is Mary Elizabeth Davis. She says she's going to do everything she can to preserve those special moments for those Henry County seniors. They're lucky to have her as a superintendent, as a principal. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. DeKalb and Gwinnett counties are the latest Georgia communities ordering people to shelter in place as the number of coronavirus cases in Georgia continues to swell. The latest count, nearly 2,200 cases, the majority of confirmed cases, 60% of the state's total in just 10 counties. The top five all now telling everyone to stay at home. Hello everyone, I'm Ron Jones and I'm working from home. And I'm Jennifer Bellamy in the 11 Alive studios. DeKalb County CEO Michael Thurman has issued a shelter in place order to begin at 9 tomorrow night, while Gwinnett County's takes effect one minute after midnight tonight. You'll find a complete list of metro communities with similar guidelines right now on 11alive.com. All right, Jay Bell, let's get to our top story tonight. We're talking about nurses and doctors reusing the same mask on multiple patients. Now, a lot of those masks are being sold online, but as our chief investigator, Brendan Keith found out, yeah, you can buy it online, but for a price. Hey, how are you? So $60 then? Um, yeah, five, $5 each, so for 20, that's 100. 95, hold on, in cash. I thought you'd said three per mask, so five per mask then. Uh, three per mask if I ship it to you. Oh, okay, this is because we're picking them up in person. Yeah, well, these I had to get locally. The ones that I shipped to you are KN95 respirators. Right. These are N95 respirators. Oh, those are N95 masks. These are N95. Okay. It's okay. Just give me what you have. I've got 90. Again, we'll just I've got 97. That's fine. I think. Hold on. 20, 40, 60, 70. All right, I got 97. Here's 97. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97 off the street. The same box of masks sold for $21.47 before the pandemic. I mean, these things are just so hard to come by. People will pay anything for them. Well, we're just not trying not to price gouge people. I mean, like, we're charging uh, three bucks. Um, if you get more than 10,000, they get a little bit lower than that. But I've heard people selling them for like five, six dollars each. Right. Um, I had to charge that because I got these locally. We found the seller online where other listings offered 30 dust masks for $250, five for 50, a single coronavirus face mask for 15. One seller was charging $20 each because, quote, these masks are really rare now, so I've had to go up in price. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Both. Because I have, I have a supply. But the thing is, I have over $150,000 of my own money out here. Invested in this. Invested. Because the manufacturers, are not gonna, they're not going to float anything to you right now. you got to pay 100% upfront. Wow. So, so you've invested $150,000 on this. Hoping about $150,000, if not a little bit more. Because we also ordered uh, 10,000 surgical... Uh, level three surgical gowns. Right. Wow. And those were six dollars a piece. My cost. This seller texted us videos of pallets of hundreds of thousands of masks. He says he's imported in the last few weeks from Hong Kong to sell to pandemic strained hospitals and doctors offices in the United States. This is how many I have going to all the doctors offices. Wow. So I have that was a 2000 shipment that just got delivered in Jacksonville. 
these are all 50, 200 pieces. And then down here we have 2,000 pieces, wow. 5,000 pieces, 5,000 pieces, 2,000 pieces. This is another 7,000 piece, 7,000 piece order, 3,000 piece order. You don't even get the masks. You just ship them right from Hong Kong to whoever. I was trying to hold them, but they're sold before they even get to me. So I was like, I'll just ship them to your uh, place. So. so who's making all the money? Well, I'm selling it directly to doctor's offices and they're using right. it, so nobody, really. Well, you're not selling it at a loss though either. Though. No, 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 I'm making money. I'm yeah. making money. I'm not making as like six dollar uh, unit money, but I'm making I'm making money for sure to yeah, cover yeah. my risk. What are the masks costing you if you're selling them for three? Um, uh, in bulk? Two dollars and sixty cents. So you're making forty cents. Yeah. Wow. That's not including shipping though. Uh, they used to make them for fifty cents, but what's happening right now is that so much demand for the cotton for the fabrics that that mm -hmm. has skyrocketed. They're making like twenty twenty five cents as well. The only people really making money are the big companies buying them in bulk depleting the supply for hospitals and then taking it to the hospitals and selling for six dollars wow yeah yeah those are the guys that are making money because i mean if you were making a huge profit you'd feel guilty in a pandemic wouldn't you i mean that's why i didn't really want to sell it to you for five bucks i'd rather just ship you the three dollar one but you needed it today so i, yeah. I, I was okay because right. honestly i'd rather just keep them for five dollars you know i don't even think I it's worth it. it to sell it for five dollars right if you didn't tell me that somebody was in dire need of it, I wouldn't have met you. Everybody's like, in dire need. It's like, uh, I'm taking these straight to a doctor's office because they're reusing masks right now. They're literally reusing masks. Yeah. They're washing masks and reusing them. They're seeing patient after patient. We told all the sellers we would like these masks for a doctor's office because it's true. We took the box of 20 to a local medical practice where they're actively testing patients for COVID-19. In Atlanta, I'm Brendan Keefe. You know, the attorney general, the Georgia attorney general is still investigating this, but, you know, his office says that if the supply chain is adding prices onto this, this may be perfectly legal. j -Bell? Now to a cry for help from primary care physicians. Investigator Re Rebecca Lindstrom spoke with one who says they will have to start laying off workers if the government doesn't get them the protective equipment they need and financial aid soon. Piedmont Internal Medicine says they want to stay open. People need to see a doctor for things other than COVID-19. That is why they say they are desperate for hand sanitizer, masks, and federal financial assistance. It, it's heartbreaking and it's frustrating and it's beyond comprehension that in the middle of a pandemic, we have physician offices having to close because of lack of resources. The CEO of Piedmont Internal Medicine isn't mincing words today. She says primary care physicians are boots on the ground without weapons and feeling left out in the cold. I'm watching the news and I'm I'm seeing our officials say call your doctor, call your doctor. You can get tests, tests are coming, PPEs coming and we're standing here like okay that's great but where is it? We're still open for business. We when we first talked with Lad about a week ago, she was concerned but calm. I, I personally am, am disappointed. Now she is mad. Each person in her office only has one N95 mask and a hand sewn cover. And then at the end of the day, uh, we take the cloth mask, we put it in the washing machine, washing machine. Lad says they have to rely on telemedicine for those with COVID-like symptoms, but those appointments often pay less. And even though the lobby chairs and workspaces are spread apart, people are scared to come in for regular checkups. And we're, we're here to help people. I can see this is emotional for you. It is. She has reached out to state and national lawmakers about the huge disconnect between the government's advice and the supplies they are passing out. She has received formatted letters and sympathy, but no additional supplies. We have not heard anything. And so it's just been really frustrating not to get the even a response from politicians. Kelly Ladd says she is still studying the stimulus package passed today to see if it will help medical professionals who are struggling financially. All right, thanks a lot, Jay Bell. You know, with everything that's happening around us when it comes to COVID-19, I tell you what, the weather has been gorgeous because spring has sprung. I mean, it, we had evidence of it today, but with that comes blossoms and allergies and sniffles and watery eyes and Chris Holcomb joins us now. And Chris, I have spent most of the day in the basement, so I've had a chance not to experience all of that. But a lot of folks out there, they want to know, is there any relief for the weekend? 
You know, I really don't see any as far as the pollen count. Look at this pollen count for today. It is 5,000. 847. Yes, that's a lot of pollen in a cubic meter of air. That's how many pollen particles are in a cubic meter of air. Now, if you're watching, you see my phone up here. That's here for a reason. I'm doing my Facebook Live as well at the same time that I'm on with you live on the ATL. We've got about 300 folks on right now, and that is the big subject. A lot of people are talking about the pollen. Now, some people have been asking, is this the highest pollen count we've ever had? No, it's not. Take a look. The highest pollen count that we've ever had, 9,369. That was on March 20th of 2012. The day before that, excuse me, <coughs> this is because of the pollen. The day before that was uh, the second highest at 8,165. And then in 2013 in April, 8,000 was the third, and you see it going down. So our pollen count today was actually the 13th highest that we've ever had on record. Now, you're asking about relief. I do think tomorrow's is most likely going to be close to today's pollen count. We do have some showers coming in on Sunday, but I don't think that's going to be enough to really knock down the pollen count. We're going to talk more about those showers, when they'll get here, and if we have the chance for any storms coming up. All right, Chris, thank you. The Georgia National Guard has deployed medical support teams to fight COVID-19 in hard hit Albany, and now the U.S. Army may want retired soldiers with medical skills to pitch in. Elwin Lopez spoke with one retired officer who has she is willing to serve once more. It just seemed like here I have the skill set and I'm not already serving in a hospital or a clinic uh, currently. So I replied back and said, yes, I'd, I'd be very interested in supporting this effort. Phyllis Wilson served in the Army for 37 years, but never as a nurse. Yet that could change in the near future, as she is also an RN willing to answer the call to service again during a time of uncertainty. The Army says it is requesting potential assistance from retired career medical personnel. The Army says it will in no way interfere with any care these former soldiers may be providing to their communities. This is for future planning purposes only, completely voluntary. Wilson says serving again, even in a dangerous environment like a pandemic, is something she wants to do. We are on the front lines, and instead of a war zone, a combat zone where we pick up a rifle, now we pick up our stethoscope. The Army says as of today, it's heard from more than 14,000 retired soldiers who are interested in returning to support COVID-19 response efforts. Now, Wilson is waiting for her call back. That opportunity to continue to serve struck a chord with me, just waiting to hear whether or not, you know, it might be one of the lucky ones that gets to go back and serve. As you know, there are a lot of challenges around us, and we love to share stories of hope. And we have a good one for you tonight, folks. Very important that we share this one. This is a story of a young mom, a wife, She's been in critical care because of the coronavirus for two weeks. It was pretty much touch and go, but guess what? She's finally headed home. We love this story and we're glad, and I'm sure you love it too. April Abernathy, that's who we're talking about, has been in the ICU on life support since contracting COVID-19 at a church, at a church service in Bartow County. When her doctors released her today, they told her she was a medical miracle. Now another family, from the church hopes it means good news is on the horizon for their father as well. Here's Caitlin Ross. My dad is 56, a very strong man. He's my best friend. Been married to my mother, Sharon, for 37 years. Brandon Bryson says his dad, Derek, has always been the foundation of their family. Even growing up, I would leave for school and he'd already be gone for work and there would be a note in my lunchbox when I get to school. I love you. Have a great day, Dad. He says it's been horrible for their family to watch him struggle in the ICU on life support for 17 days from COVID-19. When we saw a spike in the numbers early on, many of those were the initial tests coming back positive. Bartow County has 98 confirmed cases of coronavirus and Floyd County, where many of the parishioners at the church came from, has 20. He says he hopes that the number of cases will level off and people hit hard by this virus will continue to recover. I know he will fight like everything to get out, to be with my mother, to be here for me and my brother and his little granddaughters that adore him. 
Well, 11 Live is dedicated to bringing you the latest and most accurate information throughout this coronavirus pandemic. Our 24 seven news team is constantly updating our 11 Live app, including a list of communities with stay at home orders and step by step guides for those seeking financial help during these unusual times. We'll be right back on 11 Alive News Primetime. I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crock Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you All right, welcome back everyone. As you know, the COVID-19 headlines are constantly changing. This is a very fluid situation. So there's some stories out there you might have missed. So let's go through some of those headlines. First, both Disney World and Disneyland will remain shut down until further notice. The coronavirus forced both parks to shut down a little over two weeks ago. They were originally scheduled to reopen Tuesday. Even while closed, park cast members are still receiving a paycheck. The company has now vowed to pay employees through April 18th. Because of coronavirus cutbacks, more than 21,000 employees at Delta Airlines have volunteered to take unpaid leave. So in addition, all ground employees are reducing their schedule to three and four day work weeks from April through June. The company says this will result in a 25% savings in payroll over the next 90 days. And more than 170 members of Georgia's National Guard are now on active duty to help combat the coronavirus pandemic. This comes almost two weeks after Governor Brian Kemp authorized up to 2,000 service members. According to the governor's office, the troops are mobilized to support GEMA and the department, the Georgia Department of Public Health. In a statement, Governor Kemp says the Georgia National Guard is providing critical support in our efforts to stop the spread of COVID-19 and mitigate its impact on our state. After 18 days in quarantine fighting to get well, a doctor in Decatur is sharing his COVID-19 experience and the frustrating hoops it takes to try and get a test. We have four people in my house. The two of us that are healthcare workers got the sickest. Dr. Zachary Cohen is ready and finally well enough to share his story. My baby is almost two. He's 34, always been healthy. Yet this virus is no small thing. No doubt. Yeah, I'm an ice hockey player. I'm an athlete. I exercise. I'm a healthy eater. And this is the worst um, viral illness I've ever experienced. There were a couple of times where I thought I might pass out from coughing so hard and not being able to take a, a breath in. As a doctor, he was certain he had COVID-19, thought it'd be easy to get a test since healthcare workers are on the priority list for tests in Georgia. It does seem like there's a shortage and not all healthcare workers that are sick can get tested and then I, I can attest to that. You went through every channel and still could not get a test. Right. He called a doctor. They sent him to a private lab. He tried three, then to the CDC, who referred him to the Department of Health. He says they sent him back to his doctor, completing the circle without ever getting a test. You know, I've been watching all the, the White House briefings. The message we're being told is that it's very easy for people to get tested and need to be tested, especially healthcare workers, and that was just not the case uh, with me. His message, it will take all of us to fight this, whether we get sick or not. The country as a nation, as individuals, as a group, do we want to prioritize lives or livelihood? 
Dr. Cohen's ready to fight again with healthcare workers on the front lines. I'm into this for a reason, and I'm definitely ready to get back in there. And now with a lot more perspective on this illness. A doctor who understands what it's like to be the patient. To help people. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers here with you live in my basement again tonight. And you see this phone right here? That's because I'm also not only live on the ATL right now, but I'm also live on Facebook. We've got around 200 people on Facebook right now. The big topic for tonight is the pollen and when are we going to get relief? And one of the questions that I had just a few minutes ago was, does the rain help? Well, yes and no. When you have a good long soaking rain, that helps to bring those pollen numbers down. And that's what happened on Monday to give us this count on Tuesday that was at 19. And it has been dry since then, warm since then as well. And we've been watching these pollen numbers come up. Wednesday was 664. Yesterday was 3697. Today, 5847. This is the highest count so far this year. And uh, we're not going to see much in the form of relief. We have a shower coming in on Sunday but it's going to be a fast moving shower. It's not going to be one of those uh, long soaking kind of rains. So that's really not going to help us too much on Sunday. It might actually stir up a little bit more pollen. Now take a look at this. Not only did we have high pollen, but we also had high temperatures today. We got up to 85 degrees. That was our high temperature this afternoon. We should be around 68 for this time of year. So we were way above the average. And then also look at this. We were one degree away from the record. The record is 86 degrees. That was set in 1994. So just one degree away from that. And tomorrow's record is 85. We're forecasting a high of 83. So I think we'll be just shy of the record tomorrow as well. Take a look at the temperatures around North Georgia right now. Maybe you are out this evening and you started feeling those temperatures coming down a little bit. We are now below 80 degrees. We're at 76 at this hour in Atlanta, as well as in Marietta, lower 70s in Carrollton and Peachtree City. So with these clear skies, it helps the temperatures to cool off, but it's still going to be on the mild side through the rest of the overnight hours. By tomorrow morning, we're down to 63. We get up to 83 in the afternoon, two degrees away from the record. And we will see a few more clouds that'll be mixing in. So we're going to go with a nine on the wasometer for tomorrow. Here's the forecast track. Watch this southwesterly flow, not only bringing in the warmer air, but it's going to start transporting in a little more moisture, not in the form of rain, but in the form of some additional clouds that are going to be moving in. Um, and then we'll see that mixture of sunshine and clouds at lunchtime in the afternoon. It's going to break up a little bit. And then here comes that system for Sunday. Not that impressive. Look at that. 7 in the morning Sunday, that's all that's left out of it. It falls apart as it swings through. We think that by lunchtime on Sunday, whatever is left of that rain will be east of the city. So increasing clouds Saturday, still warm. Scattered showers on Sunday in the morning, fast moving system. And then dry Monday with a 20% chance for a shower late. Better chance for showers, maybe a thunder shower on Tuesday as we cool back to 68. Dry Wednesday and Thursday in the 60s. And then still dry Friday, but high temperatures move back up to around 70 degrees. Chris, thank you. This coronavirus pandemic is taking its toll on, communi on communities all over the state and even in houses of worship. Tonight, we take you to the small community of Albany where a pastor and his congregation are dealing with the worst. It has been very hard for me. Um, I am a hands-on pastor. 30 years of pastoring and Daniel Simmons has never faced a Goliath like this. Some of his church members have the coronavirus, and he knows everyone in town who has passed away. One of them, a good friend, a fellow pastor in Albany. And I know them, uh, and they're friends of mine, and, uh, and it's been tough. And even in the case of a couple of funerals, I couldn't even go because there's an ordinance limiting the number of people that can attend the graveside service. I am heartbroken. I am fighting depression over that. Um, I am fighting um, that part of me that wants to defy everything that's been handed down in terms of what we're supposed to do. Ministering to the sick and those who are hurting is Pastor Simmons' spiritual calling in life. But now he's reduced to phone calls, painful phone calls. Um, I've had phone conversations with people who are sick and, and they are crying and Family members are crying. A lot of grown men are crying. And just people you that I've seen as a pillar of strength, this has, has shown how vulnerable we are. 
And even if the number of cases decrease, Pastor Simmons believes another disease is on the way, another one that no one can see or touch. And one of the things that um, I think this country needs to be ready for is that there are going to be a lot of people with post-traumatic stress syndrome as, as a result of this virus. And there has to be something in place to, to help these folks. All right, straight ahead. With the United States leading the world in COVID-19 cases, we're asking NBC News medical correspondent Dr. John Torres about efforts to fight the pandemic. In a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Every day brings new information and more changes, so we want to keep working to give you the best information as you make decisions for you and your family. That is how we help spread facts to help alleviate the fear. Part of that is bringing in trusted health professionals. We're so glad to have NBC medical correspondent Dr. John Torres with us today from New York City. Dr. John, there was a time you and I used to sit next to each other back in the day in another city. I know there might be a little bit of delay <laughs> because of technology here, but we're really glad to have you today. I wanted to start with the idea of ventilators. I saw the president tweet out he wants car manufacturers to hurry up and make ventilators. We're, we're hearing that um, some medical professionals are talking about sharing ventilators or doubling up patients on ventilators. Is that possible? Is that sustainable? And Cheryl, you're exactly right. And to answer the two questions, yes, it is possible as far as sustainable. For a short-term period, it might work. And what's happening is coronavirus patients, this is a respiratory illness, so their lungs get affected, they get put on ventilators. Unfortunately, they're on ventilators for weeks on end, so they're occupying that one, and there's not a whole lot of surplus of ventilators to begin with. And so if more patients show up, that's gonna create a shortage. We're not quite there yet, but a lot of hospitals, including here in New York City, are looking at what happens if we get to that point, can we share ventilators? Here in New York, they're trialing, sharing two ventilators. A doctor in Michigan showed how to do four ventilators. The problem is it's very short term. The patients have to be matched exactly as far as lung volume, breathing rate. If one recovers faster than the other one, it won't work. So again, it's a short-term solution. It was used in the Las Vegas shootings until they got enough ventilators in place. 
but it's not something that's going to be long term. And hopefully, if we flatten that curve, we're not going to get people rushing to these ventilators all at once and having to need them all at the same time. And we'll have more time to, to separate them out and get people on ventilators without having to share them. Yeah, as we hear your explanation, it can give people incentive to keep making those personal decisions to flatten the curve that you're talking about. So we can expect in densely populated cities like New York City, even Metro Atlanta, where we have the highest number of cases, that the cases would be higher, they would spread more quickly. But we also have some clusters here, Dr. John, in Georgia, in smaller rural communities. Those are not immune to a faster spread either. That is a misconception that's out there. Absolutely correct, Cheryl. Small communities are not exempt. It might be a little slower getting there. Like you said, New York, Atlanta, Chicago, New Orleans, these are big cities where you tend to be around a lot of people. And so the, the virus can pass very quickly from person to person, but it's going to get to those rural communities. It's just going to get a lot slower. So they need to practice the exact same things, the social distancing, washing their hands, not touching their face, those things we know works. And the main thing to re remember, if you live in one of these small communities, it's not that coronavirus is not going to get there. It's either already there or it's on its way to get there. All right, Dr. John, thanks for the time and for your expertise. We really appreciate it. You bet. Only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his <laughs> way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. See, I just do what I say. I'm no, 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 You can no, 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 there is always something filming here in Atlanta, from movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh. did I not text you? All right. Ah, I sent my drafts. That's my bad. <laughs> So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. right, right. about I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, right? yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning rush, weekdays, five to seven AM. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the rush block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the rush block on the morning rush. But I want to thank Republicans and Democrats for coming together, setting aside their differences and putting America first. President Trump signing the CARES Act, more casually known as the Coronavirus Spending Bill, which will, among other things, send checks to Americans with the idea of jump-starting the economy. Joining me is Chuck Todd, the moderator of Meet the Press. 
Chuck, Congress able to get something done on a bipartisan basis. How much of a boost will this end up being to the economy? Is it too early to try to project that? It's essentially a series of bridge loans or bridge payments. It depends on who you are for big industries, medium-sized industries, small businesses, or people with the direct payments. But it's all designed to do the same thing. Keep yourself, your business, your industry afloat while we get through this. And see, that's the question I have is, to me, the direct payments are about getting through April, yeah. helping people maintain, you know, essentially get through not working. But what do you, you brought up, on, to me, you brought up an important point, which is this is too early to be economic stimulus, which means at some point we're going to need actual economic stimulus in order to encourage people to go out and spend money. Right now, we're trying to encourage people, no, 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 don't go out and spend money. Pay your bills. Please stay in. Don't work right now. Uh, we're going to keep. We're, we're going to do the best we can to protect you. So, I think the question is, what do we do come May and June if we still need to have some people not work? We've seen the president take a lot of hits for the daily briefings, but but I've seen some poll numbers here, giving him some good marks for his handling of the pandemic so mm -hmm. far. Yeah, you know, look, I think you see a, a bit of a rally around the flag effect. Um, there's a couple of ways to look at the president's numbers. They are bumping up a little bit. They're not bumping up the way they're bumping up for governors, right? There is a, it is interesting, and you do see, when you start to look at it in comparisons, there's a lot more confidence that, that uh, Americans seem to have in their governors in handling this than it is with the president. The views in the president are still being formed through the eyes of red and blue, whether it's the president's comments themselves or just his own reputation, I, I still think Americans view him more as a partisan and are judging him still through the prism of their red and blue glasses. I think it's also interesting to see how the phrase shelter in place has been politicized in America. The left and the right going at it over this. We're yeah. seeing that here in Atlanta with the mayor wanting people to stay in place, though she is not shutting down what's called the Beltline here or the parks, and the governor going the opposite direction. I, I think that's true among elected leaders that you're seeing, you know, some blue and, and, and red sort of differences in how to how to announce certain things, the shelter in place, this or that. But what's been interesting is the public, there's less of a partisan gap among the public. There was a partisan gap about the seriousness of this, say, two weeks ago. One of the things that we've noticed, particularly this week, that gap has closed dramatically. And while there's still some differences when it comes to um, the idea of a full shutdown, partial shutdown, try to reopen. Those have closed a lot faster than the gap, say, between your governor and your mayor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, thanks a lot. Have a great weekend. We appreciate your insight as always. You got it, brother. Stay safe. Stay healthy, brother. You too. Many of you have questions about stimulus payments, particularly for people who have not been filing their tax returns. For some insight, we posed some of these questions to Stephen Balsam, who's a professor at the Fox Business School at Temple University. So here's the first one. Can people who are in between housing or transient participate? The IRS will contact, if they don't have an address for you, they will contact the Social Security Administration and they will kind of merge their records, uh, see who they missed, uh, and they will mail a check to your last known address. Someone else asked if I owe back taxes, will the IRS deduct that from the stimulus check? According to what I've read, uh, and it was pretty clear, the IRS is not going to deduct, you know, they're not going to keep any of it. They're going to eat. If you're, if you're supposed to get $1,200, you are going to get $1,200 regardless of what you owe. And another question, if a person's low income exempts them from filing taxes, can they still get a check? If they have a 2018 filing on record, if they've got that direct deposit information, they'll use it. If they don't, they'll mail it to the address on that 2018 return. If not, they've got to go to the Social Security Administration and get your address. Uh, we are dealing with the government, and it is a bureaucracy, and the computers are not as you know fast as apples, let's say. And we don't know how long it'll take for them to get the addresses, put it in their database, and then, process, and then cut the checks. Well, we have a tool that can help you calculate how much you can get from this stimulus bill. You can find it right now on 11alive.com. 
You know, right now the state is prohibiting crowds of 10 people or more because they want to do what's called flattening the curve. So what does that mean? That means that it would slow down the spread of COVID-19 across the state of Georgia, but also what it would do is take a lot of pressure off of the, those on the front line, our nurses and doctors in health care. But what about funerals? Well, funeral directors are having a tough time limiting crowds as well. 11 Alive's Doug Richards has more on what they're hoping to get from the state as far as answers. A number of COVID-19 cases in southwest Georgia have been linked to funeral services. And while the outbreak has shut down much of the economy, the demand for funerals has not abated. This funeral procession marked the passage of an Oconee County commissioner named Bubber Wilkes. Dozens of cars were in it, marking the death of a man with a big public profile. And it, it can be very uh, difficult and challenging for families to have to decide who will attend the services and who will not. Funeral director and state representative Patty Bentley says some people still want large funerals, even in a pandemic. And while the state of emergency limits crowd sizes to 10 or less, she thinks funerals need specific attention in those guidelines. A funeral director's association has written a letter to Governor Kemp requesting rules that temporarily suspend all funeral services at chapels or other locations, while allowing limited graveside services. Right now, Bentley says the rules seem to be different in different counties, which confuses bereaved families. But then you have local governments. Uh, some are doing things totally different. And so it's created a lot of confusion and uncertainties for funeral directors as we are trying to uh, work with families during their most vulnerable time of their life. Bentley says her South Georgia mortuary is in the planning stages of a funeral for the recently deceased pastor of a very large church. State guidance, she says, can't come soon enough. I'll tell you what, it was a huge homecoming for some medical students from Georgia. They were stuck in Peru, and they were there for quite some time because Peru had shut down its, uh, its borders. So there was one Augusta University student who says that she was really concerned about making it back home. I think that uh, the feel was just, I think we were frantically trying to um, get out in any way possible. We exhausted all of our options, um, every single airline. Um, we looked at flying into any city in the United States, not just Atlanta, just something to get us home. Um, all airlines were booked, all flights were booked. So it was a combined effort to help bring Allie and all of her friends back here to the States, and she is forever grateful. Our universities, you know, had prepared to send a charter flight for us um, to get us home. We were so blessed for our universities and our families um, and our friends advocating for us and doing anything that we could to get home. And you know what? We have been following their stories for weeks, and you can watch it right now. Just go to our website at 11alive.com. College football staffs all over the nation are finding new ways to try and keep their players involved, engaged, and motivated. For Georgia Tech head coach Jeff Collins, that hasn't been a problem. As Maria Martin shows us, that means virtual workouts and cherishing that time with family. You could kind of feel that something was coming um, as cases kept popping up across the country. Georgia Tech head coach Jeff Collins and his program are in the same position as schools all over the country. Spring football halted because of the coronavirus. A lot of the college football programs aren't fortunate enough to have gotten six practices in like we were. What the accommodations will be for preseason camp or even the summer. But I think the, the health and safety of everybody and the well being of everybody is at the forefront of everybody's mind. Coach Collins was pleased with the significant strength gains his team made in six spring practices. We challenged our team uh, that we wanted to gain on average of 10 pounds per person per man. Now the challenge will be now that we're all apart from each other is to continue those gains. Now, He's getting creative to keep those climbing. We have such a young, energetic, in shape coaching staff that our coaches do the workouts too. I got up at 4.30 this morning to do my piece of it. And as we all try to navigate this new normal. Hey buddy, my little three-year-old tried to <laughs> pop in, I'm sorry. It means getting to appreciate the things we normally miss out on. Probably for the last 10 nights, 
uh, we've actually sat down and had dinner together. In this day and age of Uber Eats and my ridiculous schedule on the Power 5 football program, that doesn't happen. And uh, for that to be able to happen has kind of been, uh, you know, it's kind of been nice. Interesting. The Crown Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. We vibe with it. It's a good time. We don't worry about the hate. We just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they are fun. And they're, they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together our voices grow. Together we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Mexican. The COVID-19 headlines are constantly coming in, so here are a few stories that you may have missed today. Google is offering $800 million in credits and financial aid to small businesses, academics, governments, and the World Health Organization. The tech giant said it would provide $340 million in Google ad credits to small businesses with active accounts over the past year. The credits can be used for advertising goods and services through the end of 2020. The Florida Keys are closed and officials are setting up traffic checkpoints to enforce coronavirus restrictions. Those who actively work, live or own property there are still being admitted to the islands. However, tourists are being restricted. Anyone considered essential, including first responders and health care workers, have to show proper ID to pass through checkpoints. The mandate is an effort to stop and limit the spread of the virus. Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook and his wife Priscilla Chan are making a $25 million donation towards a COVID-19 vaccine. The Bill Gates Foundation opened the program last month with a $50 million gift. The latest donation now brings the COVID-19 therapeutics accelerator to a total of $125 million. You know, J-Bell, we now know that the epicenter for the coronavirus in the United States is New York City, and we're getting a closer look at the pressure that is now being placed on emergency rooms across that state. As a matter of fact, the governor says there is still a desperate need for ventilators. 
we've been talking about that in some of our stories because some of those doctors are actually splitting a ventilator for two patients. Here's NBC's Gabe Gutierrez with more. This morning, the U.S. has the most reported coronavirus cases in the world. I've never seen a health crisis like this before. In New York, the number is skyrocketing, now more than 37,000, a triple-digit spike in deaths. Our station, WNBC, got rare access inside a hospital in the Bronx. The ER is packed. Patients with COVID-19 symptoms are isolated. Soon, this triage tent may be necessary. The city just sent 40 ventilators and dozens of more workers to Elmhurst Hospital in Queens. 13 deaths in 24 hours. Outside, the line of patients begins before dawn. I don't know what's going to happen. From a distance, we spoke with Ignacio Ramirez, who started feeling symptoms on Sunday. He waited five hours in line to get tested. I have fever, a terrible headache, doesn't stop, it's horrible. Overnight on Fox News, President Trump appeared to minimize the scope of the crisis, casting doubt on the number of ventilators that are being requested in New York. But I have a feeling that uh, a lot of the numbers that are being said in some areas are just bigger than they're going to be. I don't believe you need 40,000 or 30,000 ventilators. The city's EMT response now approaching a crisis, with a spike in 911 calls causing up to three-hour delays for ambulances and non-emergencies. In two weeks, we have a 20 percent or 30 percent people out sick. Across the country, major cities are starting to see an increase in coronavirus cases and brave doctors risking their own health. In Atlanta, anesthesiologist Dr. Michelle O is intubating critical COVID patients. You're aware that every moment you're spending in this airway, you are possibly aerosolizing this, uh, this very infectious virus. Her husband is also a physician. They have three children. Every day, she worries about carrying the virus home. This past weekend, she and her husband redid their will to make sure their children are cared for in case they don't make it. It is a real possibility now that we could lose one or both of us. It's affected our home life. It's affected our work life. And there's really nothing that's separate from the virus at this point. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers as we are now in a dry pattern and we really deserve this because we're more than a foot above average in rainfall. The only problem is now the pollen count is up and our temperatures are way up. We just missed the record by one degree today. Now we're watching these storms that are in the Midwest out there right now and that storm system is going to stay there for a while. You can see tonight that severe weather threat is mainly going to be through parts of Kansas into uh, Missouri, also Illinois and Indiana. This is going to start to push a little bit more to the east during the day though tomorrow and we'll see um, the better chance for showers and storms up into parts of Illinois. But there you see the level two risk, which is the slight risk, that yellow color extending down even into North Alabama, Mississippi and parts of Tennessee. The dark green color is the marginal risk. That's the level one risk for severe storms that barely touches northwest Georgia. Now, I know you're looking at this thinking, OK, so that storm system most likely is going to be here on Sunday, right? Well, here's the deal. It is going to be pushing in on Sunday, but it's going to be a lot weaker. This is really going to lose a lot of strength. It's moving into some more stable air. So by the time it gets here on Sunday, it's just this light green color, which means just general showers and thunder showers possible in our area. And it's going to be a quick moving system as it comes our way. So here's a look at temperatures around North Georgia after coming one degree away from tying a record today. We got up to 85. The record is 86. We're now at 76 degrees here. Really nice night out there, kind of on the mild side. So if you were out there tonight breathing in some of that pollen or maybe just taking a breath, you know that it felt pretty comfortable this evening. Now tomorrow, we start off in the 60s. We will see a mixture of sunshine and clouds during the day tomorrow. And uh, temperatures are still going to get up into the 80s. This is saying 82. I'm saying 83. And if we hit 83, we'll be two degrees away from the record for tomorrow's date. The record for tomorrow's date is 85. So here's what we're watching with the weather headlines. We're going to be close to a record on Saturday, but I think we'll just be about two degrees away from that. Some showers come in on Sunday and then cooler air comes in next week. So let's track that for you. On Saturday, a low of 63, high of 83. We're going to give that a nine on the wisometer as we see a few more of the clouds that will be mixing in at times. Here's the forecast track. Tonight, we have mainly clear skies. Tomorrow, 
here comes that additional moisture in the form of clouds, not in the form of rain, but just some scattered clouds around, and then a mix of sun and clouds during the afternoon hours, diminishing later in the afternoon. And then on Sunday, this is all that's left of that system to the north and west of us. This is at seven in the morning. Just the thin line moves through here, just a couple of showers, not gonna be enough to wash out the pollen, just a few scattered showers Sunday, dry Monday, and then some more showers on Tuesday, drying again Wednesday as we cool back down to the 60s, then 70 again by Friday with that mix of sun and clouds again. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. You know, many businesses across our state are hurting right now because of the coronavirus outbreak. Uh, but those that are deemed essential, they're doing okay. They're doing okay. Uh, some of them are. 11 Live reporter Tracy Amick Peer talked to one company, a, a tree cutting service, and they're doing okay for now. We are working every day. We're sending our tree crews out every day, five days a week, sometimes even six. We are keeping our employees with full paychecks to bring home. David Kolb has been an arborist with Save a Tree in Atlanta for 12 years. He says since coronavirus hit, they've actually seen an increase in calls. The more time people are spending at home, the more they are going to be into noticing how important their landscape is. They're deemed an essential business, keeping people and property safe at home. I am inspecting their landscape for safety issues. Um, I look for disease, insect infestations, hazards within their trees. And cutting down hazardous limbs before they become a problem. The nature of their job makes it easy to practice social distancing since they work mostly outside. But Kolb says there are other new safety measures they've now put in place. All of our crews are cleaning their tools, not sharing them, um, instructed to wipe down the high touch areas multiple times a day. And if someone on their crew does get sick? And they will be asked to stay home for the period of two weeks. Mm -hmm. One, and they will not be able to come back until they are cleared by a doctor. And do they have a job to go back to? 100%. First on Uplink. What's the best part about Uplink? Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive, amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and yeah. they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. would wait the next week. You're all, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more ron and i will see you for up late on our sister station along with chris and <laughs>
Checkers has a new mix and match two for three deal. You can get two hot and spicy chicken sandwiches, two delicious crispy fish sandwiches, or switch it up with one of each for just three bucks. We're talking three bucks for flaky wild caught Alaskan Pollock and tender crave worthy chicken with a kick. No matter what you're hungry for, we've got you covered. No need to thank us. Mix and match two Checkers spicy chicken or crispy fish sandwiches for just three bucks. Get Checkers delivered. If you book your hair transplant procedure before the end of the month, we will give you $1,000 off the regular price of a hair transplant. That's right. Call us before the end of the month to book your procedure and we will give you a $500 voucher and we will slash an additional $500 off your procedure for the next 10 clients only. That's a total of $1,000 towards your hair transplant procedure if you call us before the end of the month. We have a very limited number of spots available, so make sure you book yours today. Hi, Katie Osborne for Endurance. You know, I realize how blessed I am to work around cars every day. With as much as we rely on our cars, we're keeping them longer than ever, which also means we're probably driving with little and or even no warranty coverage. Whether it's a transmission, power steering, heating and air conditioning, or an alternator, parts and systems in your car are going to break down. And remember, auto insurance only covers you when you're in an accident. It doesn't pay for the repair costs when your car breaks down. That can cost you thousands. An endurance vehicle protection plan covers your repairs. For a free quote, text VEHICLE to 474747. That includes parts and labor, the mechanic of your choice, hotel and food reimbursements, all while giving you 24-7 roadside assistance. And that's why we say insurance plus endurance equals total protection. For your free quote, text VEHICLE to 474747. That's V-E-H-I-C-L-E -E to 474747. At the Original Mattress Factory, we don't chase trends. We just focus on one thing, quality. We use only the highest quality material. We put our products through the ringer, testing new designs and materials. And if a new feature or technology doesn't offer any benefit, then we don't add it. Our focus is on what makes a great mattress, not a great markup. That's the Original Mattress Factory difference. Really? Hi, guys. We like the gray. If now's the time you need something you can depend on, Nissan is here with special savings on popular models like the award-winning Rogue and Altima. Get 0% financing for up to 72 months on 12 models, plus no payments for 90 days. You can depend on Nissan now. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Right now at 10, new numbers tonight from the Department of Health on the COVID-19 crisis. We are now learning there are 2,198 confirmed cases in Georgia. The death toll now stands at 65. 607 people are hospitalized. Here's what we know. As of 7 tonight, DeKalb and Gwinnett counties have the highest number of confirmed cases. Those counties are the latest communities ordering people to shelter in place. Financial relief is on the way. President Trump signed a $2 trillion stimulus package to help Americans and businesses. The president also issued an order for General Motors to start producing ventilators under the Defense Protection Act. And good evening, I'm Jeff Hullinger on this Friday night, broadcasting live from in town Atlanta at my home and I'm Jennifer Bellamy at the 11 Alive studios first tonight. We are taking a closer look at that stimulus package. The new law includes loans to small businesses, expands unemployment and sends one time checks up to twelve hundred dollars. Ryan Kruger has the very latest details on what this means for you and your family. Three weeks. That's how long the Treasury Secretary says it will take the IRS to send out those stimulus payments. Meanwhile, small business owners can start taking advantage of loans very soon. <laughs> Calling it a huge win for the economy, President Trump boasted the stimulus provides unprecedented relief to families and small businesses during the COVID-19 outbreak. We're going to keep our small businesses strong and our big businesses strong. Here's the plan. If you're single and make less than $75,000 a year, you'll get $1,200. If you're married and you combined make less than $150,000, you'll get $2,400.
Plus, parents will get an additional $500 for each child. Uh, I think it's humanitarian. It's the right thing to do. Emory Economics professor Ray Hill says this stimulus is unlike any we're used to seeing. The money isn't meant to stimulate the economy, but rather hold everyone over. Don't get the people into a further financial quagmire that prevents the economy from snapping back when we, when we do go to war. Another provision that Hill says is vital is a $350 billion loan program designed to make sure businesses don't lay off employees. What we want to do is make sure that when we go back to work that everybody gets reemployed very fast. And the best way to do that is to make sure that people don't get fired in the interim. Now you don't have to sign up or anything like that to get your stimulus payments. Now the good news is since most of us do use direct deposit, the IRS will just put the money right into our bank accounts for everyone else. They will send a check. Well, if you'd like to get a better idea of how much money you and your family could receive, we have a stimulus check calculator tool on our website for you right now. That's 11alive.com. Well, just like hospitals, we have learned that grocery stores and gas stations and law enforcement such an essential part of American life and for our society to continue on track. We have to have those institutions protected. But how do officers still do their jobs while they have to maintain social distancing like everybody else? Hope Ford found out about their renewed call to keeping you safe from more than just criminals. Law enforcement is indeed a very hands-on job, but they, like everyone, are vulnerable to COVID-19. Second Atlanta police officer is now tested positive for coronavirus. This and so the new challenge is learning how to avoid contact or spreading the virus. A lot of law enforcement agencies are changing the way they do business in a variety of ways. That's Steve Stevens, president of the International Association of Chiefs of Police. He's also the chief in Buffalo Grove, Illinois, which is under a statewide shelter in place order. Stevens is advising other police chiefs around the country to send a physical response, AKA an officer, to essential calls of services like violent crimes. Other crimes, he says, can be handled smartly. They're taking police reports over the phone, they're taking police reports in their lobby. Um, they're doing online police reporting. In several Georgia cities like Atlanta, officers are encouraged to give tickets for nonviolent crimes. Atlanta police say in limited circumstances in which there is no risk to the public, officers are asked to provide some minor nonviolent offenders with a copy of charges rather than taking them to either the Fulton County or City of Atlanta jail. And that includes things like traffic stops or theft under a certain dollar amount. But those that are arrested are given a face mask to wear to jail. We asked several other police and sheriff's departments, and for example, Sandy Springs, Marietta, Cherokee, Spalding, and Fulton County say they're limiting face-to-face -face interactions with law enforcement if it's not a serious offense. There's a purpose to this social distancing, and so we just reinforce that. And officers and deputies are carrying personal protective equipment, or PPEs. Some departments, like Noonan Police, are asking the public to donate face masks to them. But don't think that officers aren't patrolling. All agencies we talk to say Say they're fully staffed. They're available and the response time is probably going to be much quicker. You know, because most roads are empty. So will these practices help deter certain crimes? The agencies we asked, for the most part, didn't want to go into detail, but overall said yes. The location of your emergency. Calls for service are down, but criminals, unfortunately, will still find targets where they can. You're seeing more phone scams, especially targeting the elderly. Things uh, like people are calling and saying they're from a government entity, they need your identification so we can make sure you get your stimulus check. With these changes, Cass Stevens adds, there's some programs being put in place now that could carry over after the pandemic passes, like taking police reports online for crimes when you don't need an officer, but need a police report for insurance purposes. Overall, Cass Stevens says law enforcement, they're still there. Don't hesitate to call 911 on any issue, just as you have in the past. Nothing uh, on police response to those types of issues have changed. The Georgia National Guard has deployed medical support teams to fight COVID-19 in hard-hit Albany. And now the U.S. Army may want retired soldiers with medical skills to pitch in. Owen Lopez spoke with one retired officer who says she is willing to serve again. It just seemed like here I have the skill set and I'm not already serving in a hospital or a clinic uh, currently. So I replied back and said, yes, I I'd be very interested in supporting this effort. 
Phyllis Wilson served in the Army for 37 years, but never as a nurse. Yet that could change in the near future, as she is also an RN willing to answer the call to service again during a time of uncertainty. The Army says it is requesting potential assistance from retired career medical personnel. The Army says it will in no way interfere with any care these former soldiers may be providing to their communities. This is for future planning purposes only, completely voluntary. Wilson says serving again, even in a dangerous environment like a pandemic, is something she wants to do. We are on the front lines, and instead of a war zone, a combat zone where we pick up a rifle, now we pick up our stethoscope. The Army says as of today, it's heard from more than 14,000 retired soldiers who are interested in returning to support COVID-19 response efforts. Now, Wilson is waiting for her call back. That opportunity to continue to serve struck a chord with me, just waiting to hear whether or not, you know, it might be one of the lucky ones that gets to go back and serve. Hospitals across the state are now gearing up for what they believe will be a surge of coronavirus patients that will be drifting their way. But the question that many of these hospitals are having tonight as we head into the weekend is, where would they put all of these people if need be, if they get hit by a flood of folks, where would they go? And every offer of help now is welcomed, and it certainly is being considered. New tonight, John Sherrick shows us one potential site. It would be in Spalding County in Griffin. Wellstar Spalding Regional Hospital in Griffin and Wellstar's 10 other hospitals preparing for a surge. A spokesman tells us, quote, at this time we are not at full capacity across our system. But the team that is preparing for a surge of coronavirus patients, possibly soon, overflowing the hospital's capacity to treat everyone on site, looking at every option to treat COVID-19 patients. One of the options is a half mile away. Griffin's former hospital from a century ago, saved from the wrecking ball, vacant down to its original Original studs inside. James Harvey's nonprofit, My Brother's Keepers Service Center, bought the building five months ago, and Harvey is offering the building to help now. We're thinking it could be used as an overflow site, both uh, inside the building and outside the building, that can serve uh, the Southern Crescent area, perhaps the middle of Georgia. And that could potentially help ease some of the possible strains on hospitals across Metro Atlanta. Atlanta's Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms telling council members on a conference call earlier. Earlier this week. We are at a, a critical, almost breaking point. I know that there are plans in place to put some other temporary hospital or medical facilities in place. So Wellstar tells us it will consider using this site. Quote, we will send Mr. Harvey's generous offer for support to the team that is preparing for surge accommodations across Wellstar Health System, possibly giving to this old hospital new life, saving lives again. At a virtual town hall last night, the governor talked more about what factored into his decision to keep public schools closed through April 27th. He says right now there are delays in getting current data to help drive decisions and he'd rather be cautious. The data that we're seeing today is two weeks old. Uh, the data that we're going to see two weeks from now is going to be what really happened today and that's just the nature of this. And I just felt like that gives us enough time where we're not moving too fast. We've got, to, we've got to have some lead time for our school leaders to be able to ramp up, get the teachers back in a few days before the students. And uh, I just felt like the date we set would allow us to do that. Well, we've heard from a lot of parents who say pushing back the start date for school until at least April 27th puts them in a difficult position. Many of them trying to balance working from home while helping their kids with digital learning overwhelming for many parents. So Latasha Givens got some advice from an expert. Well, one of the challenges with school being closed is parents telling us the difficulty they're having with helping their students with their classwork. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, you are certainly not alone. We talked to an expert who's offering some great advice. It's a lot of work. The testing, the quizzing. Parents all over the metro have become substitute teachers overnight. Maybe your problem is math, like Sean Craft in Atlanta. But when she come at dad, what's the Pythagorean theorem? I'm like, oh, baby, I'm about to go and research this. April Crawford in Loganville is juggling three students with multiple teachers each. It's keeping up with all the requirements for each class from home while my husband and myself work at the same time 
has been a challenge. Do what works best for you, your home, your home environment, and your family. To Tanya Jordan, Chief Parenting Officer at Bark, a social media tracking app for parents, wants to help ease some of the pressure. My advice to parents who are balancing working from home and homeschooling is to just take it easy on yourself and on your children. She says balance and realistic expectations are key. We can only do what we can do. You cannot be expected to adhere to the same uh, restrictions and standards and processes that were in place on campus. You've got to shift it for your home and trust your gut. She has a few do's and don'ts like to not expect your child to sit at a desk for eight hours straight. We can't even do that as adults. She says remember to take breaks and get outside if you can. Jordan says skipping meals or having too much sugar are more don'ts because it can affect their productivity. And if the day didn't go as planned, try it again tomorrow. Give yourself some grace and give them some grace. We'll get through it and we will emerge better and closer than ever. And we reached out to several school districts to see if there's any leniency during the digital learning days. We'll post their responses on our website at 11alive.com. We are in a dry pattern right now. Also, we missed the record today by just one degree and we have really high pollen counts. Now we're tracking a storm system out to the west that is trying to move our way. I'll let you know if it'll make it here. Ministering to the sick and hurting is his calling, and his community needs him now more than ever. Next, the pastor describes how his small town is coping with COVID-19. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together our voices grow. Together we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows hey, and they would, hangers. you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. You're all, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from the coronavirus pandemic is taking its toll on communities all over the state, even in houses of faith and worship. Tonight, we take you to the small town of Albany, where a pastor and his congregation are dealing with the worst. It has been very hard for me. Um, I am a hands-on pastor. 30 years of pastoring, and Daniel Simmons has never faced a Goliath like this. Some of his church members have the coronavirus, and he knows everyone in town who has passed away. One of them, a good friend, a fellow pastor in Albany. And I know them, uh, and they're friends of mine, and, uh, and it's been tough. And even in the case of a couple of funerals, I couldn't even go because there's an ordinance limiting the number of people that can attend the graveside service. I am heartbroken. I am fighting depression over that. Um, I am fighting um, that part of me that wants to defy everything that's been handed down in terms of what we're supposed to do. Ministering to the sick and those who are hurting is Pastor Simmons' spiritual calling in life. But now he's reduced to phone calls, painful phone calls. Um, I've had phone conversations with people who are sick and, and they are crying and family members are crying. A lot of grown men are crying and just 
people you that I've seen as a pillar of strength. This has has shown how vulnerable we are. And even if the number of cases decrease, Pastor Simmons believes another disease is on the way, another one that no one can see or touch. And one of the things that um, I think this country needs to be ready for is that there are going to be a lot of people with post-traumatic stress syndrome as, as a result of this virus. And there has to be something in place to, to help these folks. Despite everything happening around us this week and the last couple of weeks, a beautiful spring has arrived in Georgia, but with the blossoms comes the pollen. And I think for, you know, so many of us that are allergy sufferers, it's a little bit different, Chris, this time around, because if you sneeze or if your nose is running, there's that instant panic in your household about, oh, oh you know, <laughs> is, is this coronavirus or is it allergies? So uh, it, it's something perhaps that has freak people out a little bit more than, you know, your normal spring around here. Yeah, you're exactly right. And the pollen number today, again, is the highest that we have had so far this year, 5,847. I've had the tickle in my throat for the past week or so and had a little cough and it's all allergies for me. And I know the feeling when you cough or sneeze or anything, everybody's like, uh oh, watch out for that guy. Um, but a lot of folks are feeling that right now. And there are a lot of the similarities in some of those symptoms. So I urge you to go to our website, 11alive.com. We have numerous stories there about the differences in the symptoms of allergies and also coronavirus. Now, I mentioned that pollen count today near 6,000. The main pollens present are oak, pine, maple, sweet gum, and sycamore. Grasses are in the moderate range. Weeds are low, and the mold is back down. The mold was high the past couple of days, but it's back down now. And if you're wondering, is this the highest pollen count that we've ever had? No, it's not. The highest that we've ever had was on March 20th of 2012, when it was 9,369. And then the day before that was the second highest that we have ever had at 8,165. Back in 2013 in April, we had a couple of high readings. That's number three and four. And then in 2019, 6,575. Those are the top five pollen counts. Remember today's was just less than 6,000. I checked on it and uh, yesterday or today's reading was a 13th. It's the 13th highest pollen count that we have ever had. Now. These temperatures and these weather conditions are conducive for those pollen spores to be popping out there. 74 right now. We got up to 85 for a high today. That was one degree away from the record. 86 is the record for today's date. We didn't quite make it there, but we came really close. Now tomorrow, we're going to watch these temperatures as they start off in the 60s in the morning. We're going to have a mixture of sunshine and clouds during the day tomorrow and temperatures getting up to this is 82. I'm going 83 for a high temperature tomorrow, and that would be two degrees away from the record tomorrow. So we're gonna go with the nine on the wisometer, that low of 63, high of 83, and a few more clouds that'll be mixing in with the sunshine. Here's the forecast track, southerly flow. It's gonna start transporting in a few more clouds tomorrow that will mix in with the sunshine, but they're not gonna be producing any rain. That's gonna come in early on Sunday. Now notice those clouds break up Saturday afternoon into the evening, then that system out from the west is gonna move in, really weakening, falling apart. This little bit of rain is not gonna wash out all the pollen. It's just gonna sweep on through here and be gone after lunchtime, we think, on Sunday. And it's just gonna be quick passing showers. So increasing clouds Saturday, high of 83, back to the 70s Sunday with those few showers early in the day. And then mainly dry Monday, scattered showers again on Tuesday as we cool back down to 68 and then a mix of sudden clouds for the rest of the week, 60s on Wednesday and Thursday, then back to 70 degrees on Friday with another dry pattern for the middle and end of next week. All right, I've got the weather wow moment of the day. 11 Alive storm tracker Diane Hardy sent us this great picture from Winder, the position of the clouds made for a memorable photo and one that all of us liked, beautiful view, even better weather, you know, the spring in this part of the world is so gorgeous and so beautiful, it, it lifts your spirits in spite of the difficult times we are in the midst of. We want to see your weather wow moments. And the easiest way to share them is on the 11 Alive Storm Trackers Facebook group. Go request to join the group right now. Virus cause you to lose your sense of taste and smell before symptoms appear. And can ibuprofen make it worse? We are verifying this week's biggest coronavirus claims and setting the record straight. 
are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Uplink? Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together our voices grow. Together we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they would ah. wait the next week. You're all, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But Welcome back, everyone. I'm Jeff Hollinger, broadcasting from my home tonight in in town Atlanta. And you know, as, as you hold your iPhone and you try to devour as much information as you possibly can during a short period of time, there's so much information out there that is disinformation, so much that isn't true that, y you know, you, you look for a filter, you look for a source, Jennifer, to make sure that the latest information is indeed credible. Yeah, Jeff, we've had our verified team working around the clock to break down those claims and rumors. Jason Puckett is breaking down the biggest ones that we've seen this week. We're focused on covering the facts, not fear. And a large part of that is finding the truth about the viral claims and rumors you're finding online. Did you see this message about researchers in Vienna who discovered that the vast majority of people who've died from COVID-19 had ibuprofen in their system? Well, it's false. There is a real debate between health officials about whether ibuprofen could make symptoms worse, but there's no evidence ibuprofen is linked to any deaths, much less a quote, vast majority. Johannes Angerer, a spokesperson for the Medical University of Vienna, said it's not true and added that they haven't even researched ibuprofen's involvement with coronavirus. So claim false. We have a deeper explanation of the debate over ibuprofen on our website. But keep in mind that the WHO says they have no reason to recommend against using ibuprofen. Next up, this image that COVID-19 stands for Chinese Originated Viral Infectious Disease and the 19 is because it's the 19th virus to come out of China. This is also downright false. The WHO named the disease back in early February. Until that point, it had been called the novel coronavirus. COVID-19 actually just stands for Coronavirus Disease 2019. It is just a shortened version of the name in the year it was first discovered. It's also worth noting WHO guidelines prohibit naming a virus or sickness based on geographical locations or groups of people. So this claim is false. Finally, many of you at home reached out asking whether COVID-19 can cause people to lose their sense of taste or smell before other symptoms show up. Well, the answer is yes. We pulled research from the American Academy of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery and ENT UK. 
They're a professional group of ear, nose, and throat specialists in the United Kingdom. They did research into a medical condition called anosmia, which is just the medical term for losing your sense of smell. They gathered data from the known cases and found that in about 40% of cases of anosmia, viruses were to blame. The American Academy of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery have actually proposed adding this as an official symptom of COVID-19 after data from South Korean cases showed anosmia in about 30% of cases. So yeah, we can verify these symptoms can be early signs of a virus and health officials are pushing to have them officially added to the symptom list. So far though, the WHO hasn't, but they did say they're investigating the possibility. Folks, we've covered several other claims online to help you share facts, not fear, with your friends and family. And if you see anything else out there that you want us to take a look at, send us an email. Medical supplies on the black market. Coming up, our reveal investigators go undercover to see the extreme measures people are taking to get their hands on masks. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta, from movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm -hmm. I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've nice got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. right, right. about that. Well, reward would be... Slimming, Slimming down. Okay, yes. Yeah. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, a little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Cross Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibes. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between. DeKalb and Gwinnett counties are the latest Georgia communities ordering people to shelter in place as the number of coronavirus cases in Georgia continues to grow. The latest count, nearly 2,200 cases. 
The majority of confirmed cases, 60 percent of the state's total in just 10 counties, the top five all now telling everyone to stay home. And the troubling news here, sadly, 65 people have now died. Coming up a little bit later during this broadcast, uh, the desperate plea for help from those at Piedmont Internal Medicine. But first, doctors and nurses are running out of masks, and they are reusing some masks after seeing patients because they are in, in such short supply. They're trying to figure out you know, where they're going to be able to get a supply. But 11 Alive Chief Investigator Brendan Keefe has discovered something really troubling, that you can go some places and find these masks where there are plenty of them. But the downside is it is going to cost you. Hey, how are you? So $60 then? Um, the five, $5 each, so for 20 that's 100 95 hold on, in cash. I thought you would said three per mask, so five per mask then. Uh, three per mask if I ship it to you. Oh, okay, this is because we're picking them up in person. Yeah, well, these I had to get locally. The ones that I shipped to you are KN95 respirators. Right. These are N95 respirators. Oh, those are N95 masks. These are N95. Okay. It's okay. Just give me what you have. I've got, 90, again, we'll I've got 97. That's fine. I think. Hold on. 20, 40, 60, 70. All right, I got 97. Here's 97. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97 off the street. The same box of masks sold for $21.47 before the pandemic. I mean, these things are just so hard to come by. People will pay anything for them. Well, we're just not trying not to price gouge people. I mean, like, we're charging uh, three bucks. Um, if you get more than 10,000, they get a little bit lower than that. But I've heard people selling them for like five, six dollars each. Right. Um, I had to charge that because I got these locally. We found the seller online where other listings offered 30 dust masks for two hundred fifty dollars, five for fifty, a single coronavirus face mask for fifteen. One seller was charging twenty dollars each because, quote, these masks are really rare now. So I've had to go up in price. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Both. Because I have I have a supply. But the thing is, I have over $150,000 of my own money out here. Invested in this. Invested. Because the manufacturers, are not gonna, they're not going to float anything to you right now. you got to pay 100% up front. Wow. So, so you've invested $150,000 on this, hoping... About one hundred and fifty, dollars if not a little bit more. Because we also ordered uh, 10,000 surgical... Uh, level three surgical gowns. Right. Wow. And those were six dollars a piece. My cost. This seller texted us videos of pallets of hundreds of thousands of masks. He says he's imported in the last few weeks from Hong Kong to sell to pandemic strained hospitals and doctors offices in the United States. This is how many I have going to all the doctors offices. Wow. So I have that was a 2000 shipment that just got delivered in Jacksonville. These are all 50, 200 pieces. And then down here, we have 2,000 pieces, wow. 5,000 pieces, 5,000 pieces, 2,000 pieces. This is another 7,000 piece, 7,000 piece order, 3,000 piece order. You don't even get the masks. You just ship them right from Hong Kong to whoever. I was trying to hold them, but they're sold before they even get to me. So I was like, I'll just ship them to your uh, place. So. so who's making all the money? Well, I'm selling it directly to doctor's offices, and they're using right. it, so nobody, really. Well, you're not selling it at a loss, though, either. No, 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 no. I'm making money. Yeah. I'm making money. I'm not making is like six dollar uh, unit money but i'm making i'm making money for sure to yeah, cover yeah. my risk what are the masks costing you if you're selling them for three on, uh, in two dollars and sixty cents so you're making 40 cents yeah wow that's not including shipping though now, they used to make them for 50 cents but what's happening right now is that so much demand for the cotton for the fabrics that that has mm -hmm. skyrocketed they're making like 20 25 cents as well the only people really making money are the big companies buying them in bulk depleting the supply for hospitals and then taking it to the hospitals and selling for six dollars wow yeah yeah those are the guys that are making money because i mean if you were making a huge profit you'd feel guilty in a pandemic wouldn't you i mean that's why i didn't really want to sell it to you for five bucks i'd rather just ship you the three dollar one but you needed it today so i, yeah. I, I was okay because right. honestly i'd rather just keep them for five dollars you know i don't even think I it's worth it. it to sell it for five dollars right if you didn't tell me that somebody was in dire need of it, I wouldn't have met you. Everybody's like, in dire need. It's like uh, I'm taking these straight to a doctor's office because they're reusing masks right now. They're literally reusing masks. Yeah. They're washing masks and reusing them. They're seeing patient after patient. We told all the sellers we would like these masks for a doctor's office because it's true. We took the box of 20 to a local medical practice where they're actively testing patients for COVID-19. In Atlanta, I'm Brendan Keefe.
Although the Georgia AG is investigating right now, the attorney general is saying if those costs escalate somewhere through the supply chain, all of this, as distasteful as it may be, is perfectly legal. But I want to thank Republicans and Democrats for coming together, setting aside their differences and putting America first. President Trump signing the CARES Act, more casually known as the Coronavirus Spending Bill, which will, among other things, send checks to Americans with the idea of jump-starting the economy. Joining me is Chuck Todd, the moderator of Meet the Press. Chuck, Congress able to get something done on a bipartisan basis. How much of a boost will this end up being to the economy? Is it too early to try to project that? It's essentially a series of bridge loans or bridge payments. It depends on who you are for big industries, medium-sized industries, small businesses, or people with the direct payments. But it's all designed to do the same thing. Keep yourself, your business, your industry afloat while we get through this. And see, that's the question I have is, to me, the direct payments are about getting through April, yeah. helping people maintain, you know, essentially get through not working. But what do you, you brought up on, to me, you brought up an important point, which is this is too early to be economic stimulus, which means at some point we're going to need actual economic stimulus in order to encourage people to go out and spend money. Right now, we're trying to encourage people, no, 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 don't go out and spend money. Pay your bills. Please stay in. Don't work right now. Uh, we're going to keep, we're, we're going to do the best we can to protect you. So I think the question is, what do we do come May and June if we still need to have some people not work? We've seen the president take a lot of hits for the daily briefings, but, but I've seen some poll numbers here giving him some good marks for his handling of the pandemic so mm -hmm. far. Yeah, I, you know, look, I think you see a, a bit of a rally around the flag effect. Um, there's a couple ways to look at the president's numbers. They are bumping up a little bit. They're not bumping up the way they're bumping up for governors, right? There is a, it is interesting, and you do see, when you start to look at it in comparisons, there's a lot more confidence that, that uh, Americans seem to have in their governors in handling this than it is with the president. The views in the president are still being formed through the eyes of red and blue. Whether it's the president's comments themselves or just his own reputation, I, I still think Americans view him more as a partisan and are judging him still through the prism of their red and blue glasses. I think it's also interesting to see how the phrase shelter in place has been politicized in America. The left and the right going at it over this. We're yeah. seeing that here in Atlanta with the mayor wanting people to stay in place, though she is not shutting down what's called the Beltline here or the parks, and the governor going the opposite direction. I, I, I think that's true among elected leaders that you're seeing, you know, some blue and, and, and red sort of differences in how to, how to announce certain things, the shelter in place, this or that. But what's been interesting is the public, there's less of a partisan gap among the public. There was a partisan gap about the seriousness of this, say, two weeks ago. One of the things that we've noticed, particularly this week, that gap has closed dramatically. And while there's still some differences when it comes to um, the idea of a full shutdown, partial shutdown, try to reopen, those have closed a lot faster than the gap, say, between your governor and your mayor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, thanks a lot. Have a great weekend. We appreciate your insight, as always. You got it, brother. Stay safe, stay healthy, brother. You too. That was Chuck Todd. I talked with him around 4.30 this afternoon. He also told me that coming up on Meet the Press Sunday that you'll see on 11 Alive, he is going to be interviewing Joe Biden, and the former vice president will not be in studio. He'll be like everybody else. He is going to be in his home and broadcasting from his basement. So that should be uh, an interesting broadcast. Again, that's coming up Sunday on 11 Alive during the morning. Um, another political question that has been surfacing has been, and we've seen this online, the accusation that Democrats had been putting some pork on the stimulus bill in that they would get a pay bump. And that is a viral claim that we asked to verify. Here's Jason Puckett with what he has found on that subject. You asked and we're answering. Did the House of Representatives slide a pay raise for themselves into the stimulus bill? Our sources here are the actual bill itself and documents from Senator Patrick Leahy's office. He's the vice chairman of the Senate Committee on Appropriations. The short answer is no, this isn't a pay raise for the House of Representatives. The text is in the current bill, $25 million set aside for House of Representatives salaries and expenses, but it's not a pay raise. 
Senator Leahy's explanation of the bill shows that this money will support the House's ability to telework, and that includes purchasing equipment and improvements to the network. They also provided funding for costs related to the House Child Care Center. But note, if you scroll up, the Senate also has $10 million set aside for the same purposes. Oh, and if you search the whole bill, you'll find that they set aside money for the, quote, salaries and expenses for dozens of government groups, FDA, FBI, DEA, and the Supreme Court, just to name a few. So no, the House of Representatives did not slide a salary raise into the stimulus bill. These claims are false. If you've got more questions, send us an email. There are so many troubling stories to report, and there are stories of hope, too. And this is one that is uh, a young mother and wife who has been battling uh, coronavirus for two weeks in critical care finally, finally gets to go home. You will recognize her picture and her name. April Abernathy has been in ICU on life support since contracting COVID-19 at a church service in Bartow County. When her doctors released her today, they told her she was a medical miracle, and now Another family from the church hopes it means good news is on the horizon for their father as well. My dad is 56, a very strong man. He's my best friend. He's been married to my mother, Sharon, for 37 years. Brandon Bryson says his dad, Derek, has always been the foundation of their family. Even growing up, I would leave for school and he'd already be gone for work and there would be a note in my lunchbox when I get to school. I love you. Have a great day, Dad. He says it's been horrible for their family to watch him struggle in the ICU on life support for 17 days from COVID-19. When we saw a spike in the numbers early on, many of those were the initial tests coming back positive. Bartow County has 98 confirmed cases of coronavirus and Floyd County, where many of the parishioners at the church came from, has 20. He says he hopes that the number of cases will level off and people hit hard by this virus will continue to recover. I know he will fight like everything to get out, to be with my mother, to be here for me and my brother and his little granddaughters that adore him. A spirited small business holding off on heavy pours to make hand sanitizer. How they are faring, that's coming up next. I'm keeping an eye on those showers and storms in the Midwest right now. Some of those prompting some severe thunderstorm warnings. That system is pushing to the east. I'll let you know what to expect when it makes it here. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us. Use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen have you seen it Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, Auntie. Yeah. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. 
The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. See, I just do what I say in the flow. No, 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 You can assume what you're doing with freedom. Let's see. Oh, and so I was saying. There is always something filming here in Atlanta, from movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Governor Kemp today tweeting about the ingenuity of one local distillery who has now turned from liquor to hand sanitizer. He's talking about the old fourth distillery. If you have tried their product during better times, it is a high quality product. And earlier this week, Liza Lucas had a chance to stop by to see how that operation is chugging along. And she has that story for us now. Bourbon, vodka, that's a typical day at Old Fourth Distillery. But in a time of social distancing, the team is improvising. One of the things that we realized pretty quickly last week was that supply chains are being heavily constrained and consumers uh, don't have the ability to get out there and buy uh, things that are now staples. Craig Moore owns the distillery with his brother and witnessing the shift in business, they decided to lend a hand. We rely heavily on bars and restaurants who buy our product. While we're uh, kind of sitting around idle for a little while, we may as well try to make something that can help the community. Last week, we had the idea of taking some of our high proof alcohol that we manufacture as a base for our vodka and for our gin and basically mix it with aloe and create hand sanitizer. Last week, the company was handing out the sanitizer for free. The demand? We were overrun and, and overwhelmed pretty quickly. The company now working to resume production, but focus now shifting to providing for first responders. Really helping out customers such as public safety and APD and MARTA police and homeless shelters, just organizations from all over the country. That With the calls out. for hand sanitizer increasing by the day, the distillery is determined to help but also now needs support itself to meet demand in the days ahead. We're watching dry weather conditions out there right now, but those conditions will change when we see these storms that are from the west that'll be moving our way. Uh, we're gonna keep an eye on these as they're moving in. They do have some severe weather in association with them back into parts of Missouri, but it looks like for tonight that severe weather threat is mainly going to be to our north and also to the west. You can see that yellow color, which is the slight risk, level two of five risk, that stretches back into the northern parts of Oklahoma, into parts of Kansas, Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana, but we're fine here. Tomorrow, this system starts to move over to the east a little bit and sag down toward the south. We still see the worst of the weather. Look at that, a moderate risk in parts of Illinois. They're going to see a, a really good chance of severe weather there. But then you see the slight risk or that yellow color, the level two risk moving down into parts of North Alabama, Mississippi, and also into Tennessee. And then a little sliver of green right there. That's the marginal risk trying to move into northwest Georgia. And I know you're looking at this wondering if it's going to make it our way as we head into Sunday. Well, here's the good news. It is going to weaken as it moves in. And really, it's going to be falling apart pretty much. We're only going to see just a chance for a couple of showers, maybe some rumbles of thunder and flashes of lightning. But we're not concerned about severe weather here on Sunday. Look at this high temperature today. We missed the record by one degree. The record for today's date is 86. We hit 85 today. The average is 68, so yeah, we're way above the average, really close to a record, but we did not break that record. Here's a look at temperatures right now. 74 in the city, 70 in Carrollton, 60s though in Blairsville, and also in the Clayton area. We'll watch these temperatures over the next 12 hours as they move down uh, tonight as they continue to move on down into those 60s through the rest of the overnight hours. And then for tomorrow, we're going to see close to a record once again. Highs near 83. The record is 85. So I think we'll be just below that record. 
Some showers move in Sunday, and then it's going to be cooler next week. So we're going to go with a 9 on the wisometer tomorrow, a low of 63, high of 83. A few more clouds are going to start building in. Here's the forecast track. You see some of those clouds that mix in during the day tomorrow. Not concerned about any rain here. Those will clear out later in the day. And then watch what is left of this system. Look at this. As it comes in Sunday morning, this is at 7, you can see this thin line of showers. That will sweep through. It's really going to be falling apart as it gets closer to us at lunchtime on Sunday. And then it ends and it moves away and we dry out for the rest of the day. Increasing clouds Saturday, 83. Scattered showers early Sunday. And then late Monday, maybe a 20% chance for a shower. The better chance is Tuesday, drying out cooler for the end of the week, mainly in the 60s. Interesting quote from Kirk Herbstreet today of ESPN. who said he doesn't think there's going to be an NFL or a college football season. Well, you know, players and coaches don't want to hear that. They don't want to think like that. They are planning that there will be football. And Georgia Tech head coach Jeff Collins is trying to keep his players involved. He is having success on that front, of course. And as Maria Martin shows us, that means virtual workouts and also really enjoying more family time kind of feel that something was coming um, as cases kept popping up across the country. Georgia Tech head coach Jeff Collins and his program are in the same position as schools all over the country. Spring football halted because of the coronavirus. A lot of the college football programs aren't fortunate enough to have gotten six practices in like we were. What the accommodations will be for preseason camp or even the summer, but I think the, the health and safety of everybody and the well-being of everybody is at the forefront of everybody's mind. Coach Collins was pleased with the significant strength gains his team made in six spring practices. We challenged our team uh, that we wanted to gain on an average of 10 pounds per person per man. Now the challenge will be now that we're all apart from each other is to continue those gains. Now. He's getting creative to keep those climbing. We have such a young, energetic, in shape coaching staff that our coaches do the workouts too. I got up at 4.30 this morning to do my piece of it. And as we all try to navigate this new normal. Hey buddy, my little three-year-old is about to pop in, I'm sorry. <laughs> it means getting to appreciate the things we normally miss out on. Probably for the last 10 nights, uh, we've actually sat down and had dinner together. In this day and age of Uber Eats and my ridiculous schedule running a Power 5 football program, that doesn't happen. And uh, for that to be able to happen has kind of been, uh, you know, it's kind of been nice. Also, Davis Love the Third's home in Glynn County, uh, and not far from Brunswick, went up in flames. Jeff Hullinger, 11 Alive, my Facebook page has pictures of that. We. We wish he and his family only the best through that uh, through that loss. All right, we will take a break. We're back right after this. City has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us. Use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. No. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. 
you hear what happened today, I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say in the No, 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 You can assume what you're doing with freedom. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told me. And that is it for us. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. 11alive.com, your place for all the very latest coronavirus. For over a decade, Georgia Natural Gas has embraced a community focus on sustainability and a healthy environment, cleaner air, reduced greenhouse gases, living a greener life. It's important to you and it's important to us. And with our new Greener Life program, we can all work together to help support environmental projects that decrease greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Let's work together. Offset your carbon footprint by joining Greener Life. Visit GNG.com to get on board. Georgia Natural Gas, proud to be a company that cares. Ready, set, go to Atlanta's family dealership, Beaver Toyota. It's on right now with 15 models at 0% financing. Don't miss this sale. Hi, I'm Linda Beaver, making sure it's quick and easy just for you. We'll leave you alone to select your vehicle, give you the best price, no back and forth, and you take delivery within an hour. You get exactly what you want, lightning fast, with the best price, and just wait until you see what happens next. We'll be friends for a long time. Beaver Toyota coming or beavertoyota.com. Attention cancer victims who used the weed killer Roundup. A federal jury unanimously found that Monsanto's popular weed killer Roundup was a substantial factor in causing cancer. You may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you or someone you love used Roundup and were diagnosed with cancer, call the number on your screen now. Don't wait. There may be time deadlines to file a claim. Call 800-499-6817. That's 800-499-6817. This is the kind of card that has America talking. With it, people with Medicare are getting all-in-one coverage for their doctor visits, hospital care, prescription drugs, and more. This kind of insurance, called Medicare Part C, may also cover dental care, eyeglasses, hearing aids, fitness programs, vitamins, even healthy meals and rides to the doctor. With this kind of coverage, you do not need a Medicare supplement insurance plan. You will access your benefits through your Medicare Part C plan for one low and oftentimes $0 monthly plan premium. You deserve to get the most from your Medicare benefits. Call now for free information that may help you get more coverage for less money. There is no obligation to enroll. Whether for yourself or someone you love, call the number on the screen now. Call now. Motorcyclists are 27 times more likely to die in a It's 11 o'clock and we're up late with you. Now at 11, hold on, help is on the way. American families now getting a real shot in the arm during the COVID-19 crisis. Tonight, we are following several new developments, including what does the largest economic rescue package in history